sit back and relax while you listen to the Train Kickers podcast. I'm Dave, and along with my co-host Dan, we plan to go all around the world to mention wargaming. On this GW-focused episode, after a brief discussion of hobby, we go into the news and how to make the most out of any losses that you have and just become a better player in general. And now, on to the show. And how are you on this uh, now Thursday night? Normally, we try to record earlier in the week. That didn't work out. I was going to do a different recording. Um, but we're trying to get this in so I can get it posted up in time on Friday. So how are you, how are you doing of course, tonight? Of course, of course. Man, it's been... Let's, you know what? Thank God for hobbies, because sometimes... I, <laughs> Sometimes they save you from your own, from your from your insanity. It's just been a tough week. So yeah, no, I've been working a lot on hobbies. Thank God. Well, that that's good. And I week wasn't actually that bad. Got my booster shot today, so today has been a little bit rough. I taught from home because I just didn't think I would make it in. Plus, they're supposed to screen you when you get in, and with how I was feeling, maybe how I was looking and stuff like that, they shouldn't let me in the building. So I was like, you know what? Oh, really? Yeah, because okay. well, they're yeah. supposed to check you for temperature and stuff like that. I, I fine yesterday, this morning, woke up, felt okay, just a little tired, and then just had uh, random bouts of, you know, feeling a little bit hot and, and just not feeling well overall. So I was like, you know what? To drive in, to go stand and teach, and then try exactly, to drive home, yeah. it might just be too much. Let me just hold a sort of faux class online, catch up with some stuff with the students, and then, you know, at some random point, I will feel entirely better. That's how most people describe it. Is that at some point you suddenly no longer have any problems? Yeah. No, I mean, so yeah, I got the booster shot as well. I wasn't really affected. Then the normal mm -hmm. shot got me a little bit down, but this booster shot yeah. was fine. Uh, my wife, <laughs> she got knocked on her ass. Uh, but even for the normal shot and the booster shot, she got destroyed. Um, but yeah, no. So we had that a couple weeks ago. I think like two or three weeks ago, we got the booster. So we should be good. We're trying yeah. to get ours in before, uh, at least sometime before PAX Unplugged, which is something we'll bring up uh, momentarily in our progress and, oh, yes, and, of course, and news of course. and all of that. But yeah, our goal was to have at least a, a week plus before that. So yeah. So I mean, speaking yeah, of progress, yeah, so why don't we done? launch into that? Because that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What have you done? please uh, okay me. so what i've been doing today was a nice day so even though i felt like crap i did get outside to prime some marvel crisis protocol so last night i was assembling some models um like I, I've, I've had deadpool bob and his taco truck for a while now and i was like you know what i, I need to get those assembled i have some of the guardians of the galaxy upstairs in my display case need to get them primed so i can get them all painted um so i got all that stuff primed i'll start painting those I, ideally this weekend i'll work on those I got my Infinity uh, assembled, so I have um, a Starmata, that's the O12 um, sub-faction. I have yes, yes, their, okay. their box, and I got the um, O12 booster box beta, or whatever they call it. It's essentially, they did an alpha and a beta. Each one had three models, so I picked up the beta. Um, so I have, okay. what, two, four, seven, 13 models sitting here. I um, I used the Worsenal... Um, cyber monday deal to get more templates tokens all that kind of stuff because it i mean i think their deal i want to say it was like 30 percent off so it was it, it was it was quite nice yeah it was yeah. it was 25 to 30 depending on what you bought yeah yeah i mean i've got most of what i wanted for the same price as just the token set that i was going to get so actually now i have quite a bit of stuff um that should hopefully be here tomorrow so i can actually try infinity in this edition i think the last time i played was n2 i don't think i played any of n3 I don't believe so. So it's 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 been okay. a while for that. Um, I did not prime them because as metal, I'm not painting them right now. And if I'm not going to paint them immediately, there's no reason oh priming them because of chips and problems like that. So I'm I'm going to prime them when I'm actually ready to paint them all up at once. I I know we talked about this in the. Uh, by the way, if you're crinkling, that's my cat trying to enter his Chipotle bag. Um, no, I don't hear. No, I know we talked. Oh, thank God. So, uh, no, I know we talk about this in Infinity, and I know mm -hmm. people adopt, live and die on the metal models, but uh, God, I just love plastic. They, like, they if I had die. a choice, it'd be plastic. Yeah. Yeah, it's, just, was... it's plastic, metal, then resin. And the only reason resin is so low is because the paint chips. If you don't wash it thoroughly, like you have to, you have to really wash that sucker. Yeah, but, the mold um, release agent can be really bad on resin, exactly. depending on the type of resin, but it can be bad. Yeah. Exactly. So metal is usually metal and resin usually interchange all the time. But plastic, good for me, has always been 
especially like I'm not trying to be a simp here, but like GW plastic has always been like the top for me. Well, I mean, they're, they're, you know, it's true though. Their plastic, they have the best plastic. That's what it boils down to. They, yeah. you know, theirs is the premium product. You pay the premium price, but you do get a you get a premium product. Um, I don't know, I'm not saying that exactly. it's always worth the cost or anything like that. But when you assemble a model and it goes together perfectly and pretty seamlessly. There, there's something to be said about spending a little extra money to make sure that it works exactly as it's supposed exactly. to. Even these metal models, like some of the spots, the one, um, I do not know the army well enough to be able to tell you which model it is. She was in the, I think she was in the booster pack, but her, her head, part of an, I think her head, one arm and like upper part of her shoulders are a separate piece. So you're, yeah, Love so me. you're trying to, and it, it's got a little, um, a little nub at the end. So you're essentially trying to sink it into there. And it didn't fit. I mean, the, the easiest way to put it is in no way did it fit. So I'm here just messing with uh, this model, just uh, trying to shave it down enough so it fits and then get it f to fit well enough so that way when I put glue in it, the glue can cover the gap and then I can paint that. Yeah, exactly. That sucks. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was it was, it was, was annoying. Like, it's fine now, but no, assembling metal is not fun. Honestly, I'll do. no, it's not. I, I, I'm, for me, the big thing with metal is okay. So, like, sometimes, listen, shit happens. I'll drop the plastic miniatures every now and then. Not all the time. I'm not like you know clumsy, but it, if they drop, you know, I have a washer in the base, so they will like break off the base, kind of nonsense. But they won't shatter. But nope, if you drop a metal explode. model, if you drop a metal model, I dropped one one of my BattleTech miniatures once. That thing exploded. Like it just went everywhere and it sucks. It feels really, really bad. Um, but yeah, no, that sounds good. Man. They, yeah. Some was, yeah. I think it was, I, I got to think about this. Uh, I think it was the, um, might've been the Cho model. I have it pulled up. It's either Cho or Hippolata. It might be Hippolata, but one of it, it was, it was bad. Like, I mean, they're assembled. They look pretty good. I can play them hopefully tomorrow. Um, See what happens. Uh, and then I've just been working a lot on my um, Cruel Boys. I have all that I want built. Most of it is painted. I'm painting up my third unit, Gut Rippers. I have another set of the Bolt Boys um, just about done. All all large monsters except for um, the giant Vulture. All the other ones are done. The Vulture I have not actually put together yet. But my Sludge Raker, he's done. All that kind of stuff is done. I'm just waiting right. on the, the big guy for when I get a few more things done. It's not uh, bad then. No, no, I've been able to actually get quite a, surprisingly quite a bit done. I mean, some of it has been at the detriment of some work I should do, but um, the wife has had less events. She has an event this weekend, but she has had less events, so that's been able to translate into just having more more time actually during weekends and all. So I think, I think for actual progress, for things I've done, I think that's actually it for the moment. I also haven't really gone out much lately, so yeah. I mean, yeah, normally I go, bad. I'll go like once a week and go play some Marvel Crisis Protocol. Last two weeks, just stuff have come up, so I haven't. So then I sit home and I hobby instead. So, but how about you? Let's 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 judge your hobby. Okay, no, no, I've been oh, okay. So now, so I've been. Oh my god! Tell me how many custodes so, you bought? Okay, but see, that's I hear the judgment. <laughs> this is not uh, okay, so, no, okay, a judgment-free zone. Okay. <laughs> oh my god okay so listen okay it, there's a reason though okay so yes i, I have two custodes it. yeah okay but look look i only have 10 wardens right i need 15 because that's three units of five which is not only fluffy but usually you take them in units of five so that you can avoid the blast template that's kind of okay. like the, the meta that you kind of do with custodes. So so three units of five wardens, and the new codex is dropping. We don't know how the wardens are going to be. So it's kind of also pre-proofing. And plus, I have 15 of everything else, so might as well have 15 wardens. So, so is it I like, don't need any more, you know what I mean? Do you think it's to some extent an OCD sort of thought then? Like, well, I have 15 of these. I, I yes. need 15 oh, no, of no. these. 100,000% yes. Okay. I did this. I don't know if you remember my white Do you remember my white scar army that I used to have? Yes. Heresy? Yes, I do. Yes. That was an entire chapter. So that had exact, I literally looked up and it was OCD. I had 60 bikes, 20 assault Marines, that's 80, 20 Marines with uh, rhinos, and then whatever else, the like extra stuff it had. So I, I, I filled it out. So because I have 15 Venetari, so three units of five, I have 15 Sagittarium, three units of five, 15 Spears, 15 Shields, so on and so forth. The fact that I only have 10 Wardens annoys the hell out of me. So 15. Now I only have 10 
of the Hitarian gods guards. Right. Those are for 30k, but I can only take 10 anyway, so that doesn't bother me. So I've I bought five new wardens. They come in a box of five. And they're super, and I had also, by the way, I had eight plus five, uh, five guys, 10, 12, I had thirteen dollars worth of um uh, credit due to Warhammer. Plus. Oh yeah, they give you credit, right? So they 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 gave out I think eight dollars and then yeah yeah. Yeah, because they were having a sale, so whatever. So I used it on that. Um, I also bought five new Sisters of Silence. And this one was a big reason. So the box set only comes with five sisters, um, which is annoying. So I, I usually like <laughs> taking two years. So, so I bought five sisters. And then I bought, so this is the weird one. So I only had nine Alaris, which is a they, really odd amount they because they come in three? box of three. Okay, that's why. Yes, they do, which is really annoying, but I want 15. And so what I did was I bought, I got a bunch of credit from um, one of the 30k events I went to in Mythicos. So I bought a box of Alaris there, or I used, I used the credit later to just, per, just get the box of Alaris. Um, and because the, the box that comes with three, nine plus six is 15. So that'll be good there. So basically now everything, basically the custodians is finished. The only thing I'm missing are kind of things I don't like, like the tanks, um, or specifically the troop carrier I don't like. Um, that did, I don't like the, they just look weird to me. I mean, Dune kind of made me like them a little bit more, okay. but honestly, I'd rather buy land raiders, which they can take than I, than I, I'm going to see how the new rules shape out. Basically now is the time when I see, all right, are land raiders going to get better? Are those tanks going to get better? If not, I'm not worried because I don't like them. I prefer infantry, which sounds weird, but, or, or and contemptors, which aren't infantry, but they're walkers. So it's close enough. Yeah, <sighs> but yeah, so that's what I bought. I haven't even built them yet. Uh, that's okay. I Buy, built, though, buying counts as so, hobby. Yeah. Okay, well, says well, what I this, okay, so this is what I'm super excited for. So I got Valdor, painted him. Yep. He's done, uh, and I'm giving someone his big 60 mil resin base. So they they come with a they come with a display base, and okay. then they come with a play base. Uh, I refuse to use the display base because you have to magnetize. It, it's a pain in the ass. Because it's so locked in, right? Yeah, ex not really. It oh, no. does and it doesn't. It slots in. It slots in, but you have to magnetize it so it goes around the base. Okay. Uh, uh, Brett did it. Uh, just, I'm not gonna. No, no, no. Um, so I'm just giving someone it because uh, honestly, I don't need it. it's a big chunk of resin. But he's finished. He's got his name plate already. I pre I pre did his main hit. But my favorite thing I did. And you can come see this on my Instagram at uh, Cuban underscore painting underscore minis. Uh, but I did a super cool conversion for a blade champion. Um, I took a bastion from uh, Stormcast Eternals, uh, and I took the Judicar sword, which is that big, I guess, executioner sword. Historically, is what it would be. Yeah. Um, and I took a bunch of custodies bits because I didn't like you know you don't want to make it look like a Stormcast. You want to make it look like a custodies, and uh, it just it looks it looks you've seen it. I'm assuming. Yes. Um, I, yeah, I have. It, it I've looks, seen you post it like yeah, everywhere. It, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it looks it looks really good like i'm super freaking proud of it and it's kind of cool because it stands a little bit taller than the custodies so he's got a little more beef to him um but it looks good like it looks like he look and he's intimidating i didn't mean to do this but like the head's like looking down and he's like striding it literally looks like he's looking down on you as it's about to murderize you so super cool conversion that i'm happy about um let's see and what else i did so i just packed a, up a, my terrain a, for the titanic oh yeah he's, so he's a blade champion yeah, so this okay. is the new this is the new guy that's coming out. Um, I'm still going to pick it. up that model as well, um, but I wanted to make my own kind of, and also I kind of wanted to use him as a praetor or tribune, sorry, in 30k as well. Um, okay. So he's he's kind of going to be my 30k champion. He's just again, he just looks like he <laughs> he looks like he, I was comparing him to like one of my uh, 30k friends, praetors, and just she's hmm. looking down on him, and it's just so intimidating and great. Um, and I'm, I'm so happy he's going to die to like bolt shells because <laughs> you definitely. know, it's going to happen. Oh yeah, absolutely. But yeah, no, it's, it's, I'm like, he's really cool. Um, and then I packed up all my terrain for the Sunday event. This Sunday event, we're having a, a huge Titanicus event in, uh, New York, uh, Nanuet, Nananet, whatever it's called. Um, and the, I, I think it worked, I it's think. a narrative and everything. And mm -hmm. Nanuet, right? Yeah. I, and, um, so, yeah. I mean, we, we built a seven foot space elevator for the table um so it's okay space so what battle. is so the so the space elevator is it just a reasonably tall structure Here, in the on. middle that it it means oh yeah this thing goes to the sky kind of thing or are you yeah yeah, yeah. this it's we're fighting over the space elevator and there's other tables as well 
so we're, there's fighting around the planet. It's it's a narrative essentially. Okay. But, um, the the narrative is eventually culminating to capture the space elevator because, you know, thirty k narrative reasons, of course. Okay. Let me see here. Here we go. This was painted. This was painted about, uh, or this was built about two weeks ago. He hasn't showed it. Showed it us painting yet, but I put it in general. Okay, that's yeah, the uh, yeah. space elevator. Okay. What stores is that? Yeah. So that's unpainted, obviously, and and not. Uh, hold on. This is why we have Facebook. Yeah. Uh, I, I know they have a few game stores so around there. I've never on. actually been though, but I remember um when I used to talk hold to some on. more people out of New York. <laughs> I don't want to say it's like I want to say it's Toy Wiz, but I, I just want to check. Toy Wiz is in that is that town? Yeah, Toy- it very well could be Toy Wiz. Toy Wiz. Yes. Is there. Let's zoom in. With the Facebook, you don't give me. Oh my God, Lord have mercy on my soul. All right, hold on. We can assume Toy Wiz because Toy Wiz is in Anuit. It should be all right. Yeah, yeah. it is Toy Wiz. I'm looking at. Yeah, so, so it's in toy ways and yes yeah, so that that's happening on sunday and then and i, I think you're going to pax i finally go to my yep. first convention in 20 years the last Dude. convention i went to I, 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 we had this debate this i know lie. but the, the, technically the last i hear the last convention i played at is that better yes <laughs> i i was free to play at was uh games day the la- like one of the and it wasn't even the last game day it was just one of the games day so you know i'm going to pax in two weeks um i'm setting up my list with because um saturday is a 30k event and it's a two mm-hmm. versus two four thousand points aside game narrative and then sunday is three thousand points uh, but one mm-hmm. versus one so i got okay. my list ready or I'm, I'm finishing them up um so i'm i'm busy those two days and i know you're going to pax too, right? i am i don't have anything do i don't there? have any particular um organized play things that i'm going to do there's some stuff that's interesting like uh so i i have a quite a few people are going i have uh two of my siblings are going they're going with their husbands i got a bunch of friends from several different stores that i go to that are going the only organized thing i know for sure that's happening is my brother-in-law and some of his friends are doing one of the um a, a D&D, it's like a dungeon race sort of thing. It's, you know, you're, you're trying to get through it, whatever it is. Okay. But, you know, you're competing against the other tables to probably get some pins or something. They're doing that on Friday at, um, I want to say it's like two, two to six. I may join them. I'm just not 100% sure. So um, going with the wife. So we're both going. She's not as big into board games, but she'd rather be there, you know, close to where everyone is, being able to hang out, meet up with us, watch her Christmas movies from the tell rather than stay at home. So we're gonna drop the dog off at the um, the uh, the the place we board him at on uh, Friday morning. Go down there and then hang out until she's able to get into the room. Um, the, the yeah the, the okay yeah, the that's that's problem that's... though is that the thing they're doing is at two p.m. If we can't get in the room till three, I'm not gonna really leave her there while she watches us from afar play D and D. Now she has done that before. But when we've done it, it was in our apartment, and it was also because we used to when we used to do D D, we'd have the wives over as well. So the guys would be playing, the wives would be sitting there, and they'd listen to the just ridiculous things that we were doing, like finishing a campaign, taking two minutes, and then starting up the next campaign, just switching out character sheets, all those kind of things that we've done in the past. Um, but I don't want to have to you know just leave her hanging out there because like my sister, neither of my sisters are getting there until like Saturday, so she doesn't really have anyone to hang out with. So we'll see. I might do that, maybe not. Otherwise, I didn't see a lot of organized stuff that I wanted to do. Um, I thought about the Titanicus event, but I'm like, you know, it's Sunday. I don't think I'm going to want to stick around all day Sunday. Again, you know, the wife will have to be coming around with. I don't want her to have to, have to hang out there for that. And also, we got to go and pick up the dog. You have to pick him up. I think it's... Exactly. I forget if it's between 5 and 6 or 6 and 7. That's all they're open on Sundays. If you don't pick him up, then you got to come back Monday. And I work on Monday. It's going to be a real pain in the ass. So... There, I think there was a lot of back and forth of whether or not PAX would happen. So they didn't schedule official events much. The 30K people and, and Horse Heresy sort of people did, but a lot of other groups didn't schedule anything. The only thing otherwise that I know organized miniature game related is um, Legion is having a tournament there. And then there's a lot of like bring in battles and stuff like that. I might sign up and, you know, bring maybe my Song of Ice and Fire army or or something like that. Something I don't get to play often. Like my Marvel, I can go to a store. I, I can go just about any day and get a game of that in. So I don't feel compelled to bring it there. 
but like Ice and Fire, maybe that's worth it because I don't get to play that as much, or maybe something else that I really don't get to play very often. But otherwise, I'm, you know, I'm I'm a avid board gamer, so I plan on spending a lot of time in the unpublished room. So that's the room of games that people are hoping to get a publish for in the future. Some of them are like, yeah, we're about to go to Kickstarter. Some of them are, yeah, we're you know we have someone we're working with, but we're still trying to play test kind of feels and some of them are i came up with this idea see what you think man i hope one day you'll be able to buy it um which is it's a great feeling the problem is you could play an, an awesome game we played one two years ago where essentially it's it's a you know most points win kind of game but the points are money so you are like vendors at an amusement park and you're <coughs> excuse me you're trying to match what people would want so okay. like um say say it was ice uh, ice cream hot dogs and popcorn let's say that was the three things well hey for this round right now people are willing to spend three dollars for popcorn two dollars for hot dogs and a dollar for ice cream you know so if you can you know you'll get more money if you can you know have the right stuff available but there's only so many people that want to buy things so there's only say two people who want hot dogs so like oh maybe that's worth more money but if i go for it and i'm not the one who actually gets to feed them well now they've had that now they transfer to something else so it, it, it was it was a fun little game a lot of nice little mechanics <laughs> and when we were done because we played the full game there was like three of us who played and we played the full game we're like man this is really great he's like yeah i really hope to get it out there one day and you never know if you'll see it again so you played it it was fun but you don't know if you can ever actually try it you know it's actually pretty cool i like that it, it, the it's room itself awesome. is a lot of fun. You you got to try that out. We'll have to go through there so you can try out some, you know, some more rough stuff. You know, other than that, probably just gonna buy, you know, go around demo a bunch of stuff. I buy several games on Friday and then probably play them through the weekend. It's probably what's gonna end up happening. All right, that sounds good though. That sounds good. Yeah, uh, it's a great convention. I've I've been to it in the past. <sighs> um, I think Shut yeah. Up and Sit Down is having a um, a panel. So I do, they do live recordings of their podcast. So I do, if I can, I would like to go to that. So just, just enjoy it before, um, you know, before Christmas hits or before there's, you know, before things get worse. What, what Lisa was just nice. It's vaccine mandate and mask mandate. So yeah, I feel, and mask mandate, which is the only reason I can go, yeah. <laughs> you know, I still don't feel a hundred percent comfortable with it, but I feel a lot more comfortable. And now having on the booster feel a lot better as well. Exactly. So. I, I think that yeah, might be it for progress. Okay. That's a lot of a lot of things. Yeah, no, that's we've been doing a lot of Oddly stuff. Enough, it's, the most, it's the busiest shit, so. time of the year, but I feel like I've had the most time lately. I don't know why. All right, so why don't we uh we'll transition we'll, we'll transition to some news here. Most so of um the first thing of news I noticed was um the battle forces are all going on yeah, pre order yeah. very soon. They weren't this week, but I think they might be like next week or so. They they want to probably be a little bit before Christmas. Mm. It's next week. It's if next you go week. through, they're all yeah, roughly a hundred dollars in savings. Um, they vary between like 80, 85 up to about 110, I think is, is the most. Um, but all of them save you just about the same, which isn't bad mm -hmm. for, for in terms of GW money, that's actually really good savings. And it is good overall, absolutely. I mean, if if you're thinking about getting into any of these armies, this is a great way to do it. Yeah. Um, although the Adeptus uh Mechanicus one is oh, yeah, delayed, that won't come out till January. Yeah, that makes sense. That's probably because everyone's buying the Deptus Mechanicus. Although they got nerfed recently, so I'm still surprised it's such a like sought after army. But you know what? Whatever floats people's boats. Yeah, I'm not chase sure. That meta. I don't know why it was <laughs> delayed. It might have just it's probably just production issues. It's, would it's, be my thought. I, was, I bet you it's it's still a meta army. It's still a tier S army. I mean, yeah. they had a lot of nerfs, um, and I I know that they got knocked off their podium a lot in a lot of the recent tournaments that I follow, mm -hmm. um, but they're still good. So, yeah. I mean, and, I, and plus, yeah. with the new nerfs, they, robots are a big thing, too. So Yeah. I don't know 40K-wise, but I did go through and do some uh, do some points and stuff like that for the ones in, in Age of Sigmar, and they're all, you know, roughly close to a thousand points like some of them are a little bit less the um the one for uh soul blight grave lords is like 870 points but that's also because you got like a bunch of zombies and things like that which exactly. are not many points but a lot of the other ones um are more like the osark bone reapers i want to say theirs was over a thousand points so that it gives you uh theirs was a thousand eleven hundred fifty five 
So all the other ones, give, not bad. Yeah, they give you a good amount of army. You can get an army for essentially, they're all 210, every single box. So you can get a good amount of army, you pick on up a couple things, and then you have your full list. Honestly, I mean, I, I know you mentioned the, was it the Revenant Legion, the Soul Blight? Yeah. I yeah. know that they're, what, 800 points, but Revenants also have a lot of those big they monsters. Do. So if they have that core, they have that core, you know, you have that core 800 points, and then you fill out the rest of the 1,200 with, you know, big boys, the big boy zombie dragons. Exactly, yeah. I mean, you get 40, um, 40 zombies, 20 skeletons. That's a good basis. You get a couple big boys. Like I said, it has it has one. It has one of those, I don't like the look of them. The, the leaders, yeah, yeah the HQ. But I know, yeah, others. we talked about that, yeah. Honestly, the, the I mean, Venari probably is gonna, the shiny, the Lumineth is going to be the the most expensive, probably point wise. Um, probably. I don't remember. I don't think I have theirs saved here. I think I went through theirs as well, and it was it was roughly around the same. They're all yeah. in that sort of sort of ballpark. Um, I mean, I think the Osark Bone Reapers one looks good, but I don't think I want to paint that much. They're bone. cool looking army. They're yeah, cool they're great looking army. army. I don't think I want to paint that much bone, and I still have Stormcast to work on. I'm almost done with my my orcs, but then I have Stormcast after that, so no. Yeah, that sounds good. Now let's see what else. What else? What else was released? Um, oh, the Advent Engine. The Advent Engine was uh, yeah. was uh, be, is being done. Okay, so this is okay. So I'm not excited. Well, you know what? I play Elder, I'm so not. I'm excited. But I, <laughs> our friend, our friend John, on the other hand, no, no. So the two first releases are they're obvious, obviously Eldar. Um, yeah. I mean, you have the stupid little spirit stones. You have the the, the wraith bone, the stupid Eldar symbol. They're, they're one thousand percent Eldar. Uh, and you know, I was talking to my friend John. You know, what could it be? Um, and you know, the first one is probably some sort of aspect warrior. Um, the definite second one is definitely an engine of sort. But he's like, you know, these are new models. For, I mean, Eldar have older models than I've been alive. Have some which really is old stuff. Some stuff they redid. Insanity. They redid some of their. A- yes. did, re- did they redo all the aspects, or only some of the aspect warriors? No, some. Uh, the, the, the 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 I think the sp- uh, warp spiders are like twenty five years old, twenty six years old. They never. So what is the effect spiders? of these these things? Well, they redid them in fine cast. <laughs> oh, oh oh! I thought they actually. I thought they redid them oh, entirely. No 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 no! These are some some of those guys are some of the original sculpts, not like from Generation One, obviously. Uh, but some of those dudes haven't been changed since like fourth edition, fifth edition. When was fifth edition? Yeah, it's fifth edition. Like Fifteen years ago. Yeah, no, some of them. Some of them are old, like old, old. It's gross. Um, the, some of the newer ones are like Jane's are. Jane's are was redone. Um, yeah. The Howling Banshees were redone. Um, striking Scorpions were redone, I'm pretty sure. Yes, the, and, those Striking um, Scorpions were redone. were redone. I don't see the new Fire Dragons. No, those guys are old. Those are oh, old. Well, I, I guess they they're probably not. With are they plastic or metal? Let me see. Are they plastic or metal? If they're plastic, then they've been redone. Oh, I my God. It's resin cast. Only. Yep. It's, it's, okay. And it's also fine cast. Ill. Yep, no, ignore. All right. So, no, they have not been redone. I thought they were. So the sculpts were not redone. Uh, those warp spiders are absolutely not redone. The guardian no, squad the not redone. Fish. Black guardian. Uh, the rangers. That's a no. Let me see here. Oh god, I they redid a lot Lord. less than I thought. I thought they had redone a lot more. Yeah, of their no, lines. this is no, no. They're there, there. When I say old, old, I mean, I mean, they're old. <laughs> they're really, really old. Um, but you know what? Like I said, exciting if it is Eldar, and if it's not, oh, GW, please. So. <laughs> please. Uh, okay, so I don't I don't know this. enough. I don't know if enough about this Advent Engine. I liked yeah, when they used to do the Advent Calendar, yeah. where they used to give you like some short stories and stuff like that. I thought that was very cool. Um, is is every box on this calendar a different model? Yes. Okay, so they are previewing twenty four models. Twenty four models or twenty four things. Like like sometimes I think one of them was a short story that they did. Uh, they previewed a short story in the past. They, they did released that. Are, a short is that story. What they're doing here? They're going to preview a short story. Uh, in they, a yeah, box? A short, yeah, yeah. Well, no, a, sh- a short story came out. It was like a. It was an orc short story. Yeah, but but that's a separate thing entirely. Right now we're only on second oh. of December, and they've ticked off two boxes. Oh, then. Oh, uh, you know what? I have no idea then. I mean, I, it, I, it ju- I don't know. All it says on their, their site, it says, over 24 days, our mysterious festive contraption Seriously. will dispatch a daily glimpse of the future. And it could be for Warhammer, Sigmar, 40K, any of that kind of stuff. Who knows? Yeah, so so these are Warhammer then. Yeah, these are the, the okay. So it might just be models. That's the way that be- reads to me. I mean, how are you going to preview a story? I'm, look, I'm looking at the calendar now. It, 
there's not a particular pattern. They feel random, the placement of all of this. No, no, I agree. It might be just be 24 different models, which would be, again, interesting. But all Troll, troll man, uh, GW says it's all now Eldar. <laughs> all Eldar. I think we'd have to call 911 on our friend. He'd have a stroke are, right then Are there. Eldar supposed to get their <laughs> update have, soon? We'd have to call a wellness check. Are they, no, are they due for their There's update? No. They, well, yes. <laughs> Eldar have not been updated since the beginning. Yes. So they have not been updated since the beginning of 8th edition. Mm-hmm. So they are first tier 8th edition Codex Army. So they are really, really far behind the curve. Now they had some updates, you know, with uh, the, um, you know, those little supplements that they had, yes. the Psychic Awakening, what it was called. Uh, and then the FAC also came in and updated them for 9th edition, but they're just, they're just so bad. They're so bad. Uh, for what they do, and honestly, it, it's an easy fix. All you have to do, like, you, the, every you know, well, we'll get to custodians in a second because, oh my lord, have mercy. But you know, Eldar can do a big thing with like you know, reducing ballistic skill, you know, or forcing you to shoot another another uh, squad than the one you're targeting. Right? That's that's mm-hmm. Eldar trickery. You know what I mean? That's kind of what they used to do. And you could easily say, all right, you could only hit this squad on a six for one turn, you know, because I don't know, they dance really funny. You know, so you that's how you could play, you know, modify Eldar to be more durable. You don't make them stronger, you don't make them tougher, you make them more tricky, which makes yeah. sense. Um but yeah, again, it's just it's just they they need help. I mean they the this is one of the tier trash armies along with Gene Steelers Ooh, Cold. But we'll talk about, yes, but we no no Gene Steeler Cold we'll talk about in a second too. Which yeah, you know, Gene Steeler Cold are getting a lot of good there. things. No, hold on, hold on. Fuck it. I'm going to custodies. I can't wait right. anymore. I try to no, wait. Go ahead. Oh my no, god. We've, we discussed the calendar. There's nothing uh, else cool in that calendar. Uh, uh, I've been screaming all week long. Um, okay, so they started. Okay, I, I'm going in order of what they started, and I'll. But I want to go in order. I also want to go in order of like what what freaked me out. So I'm going to go in order of what freaked me out. So, okay. um, they uh, first they started off with the kata stances, which of course no one is going to pronounce correctly. Everyone's going to mispronounce it. It's going to be amazing. But essentially, what they kata? did was they gave custodians. So, kata, you know what? See, that's what the, was already right. started. If, if, no, if, because you study, a, um, if you study martial arts, it's pronounced. I believe it's pronounced kata. I, I for, for a second there, I swear to God, I thought you were going to say if you studied the blade, I, I was no, going to die no, right there. No, they, they, no, no, no martial arts right is called kata. There. Oh, it's yeah. kata. Okay, so it's so kata. little custodian, little tiny bit of custodians love. So custodians uh, are very different from space marines, besides being tougher and bigger. And and just better space marines. Uh, space marines fight as brotherhood, right? They fight very much like a, a legionary force because that's how they were trained. Yeah. Custodies also do that ish, but every individual custodies is mostly a philosophy. Oh, give me a second. My cat right. is being an asshole to my dog. Um, no, you're good. You're good. So, um, uh, so yeah, no. So every custodies is um, kind of an individual. They yeah. fight as a group, but they also fight individually. Um, and it's like in the short stories, they're always like deflecting bullets with their spears, but then they would stop that and then start jabbing really fast, but they would stop that and turn into lunges. So it'd be like different martial arts stances. Mm-hmm. Never was represented in the game, but you know what, whatever. It's, you know, sure, cool, cool story. Um, but these kata stances are basically that. You know, you, it's, it's, it's kind of the Space Marine doctrines where you select... Okay, so first of all, there's six of them. They previewed three. Um, and each of the six have two forms. So essentially how it goes is you select three when you deploy. And then turn one command phase, you start with the first. It goes in order, one, two, three. You start with the first, right? In first A. Mm-hmm. Then in turn two, you can go to kata 1B, or you can shift to kata 2A or kata 2B. Um, if if you go to kata two, you cannot go back to kata one. Now, of course, there might be a stratagem that you know lets you switch around, or Trajan might let, but you switch. So basically, the idea is once you switch a stance, you now are in that stance, and then you will go to the other stance. But you can kind of each stance is not just one thing; it has those two little substances in it. So you can go stance one a one b. So that's two turns. Then turn three, you can go. 2a but then turn four and five you can go 3a 3b and skip 2b altogether 
Okay. Um, and it's really cool because you choose, you don't choose it like before when you're making your list, you choose it when you see the army. So if I'm playing against one army that I know is a shooting army, I might not go for a melee kata stance at all. I might just go for pure kata stances to mm-hmm. defend myself from the shooting. But if I'm going against gene stealers, I might go for my favorite kata stance that I've been loving is you, you, you make all your damage one, right? Which sounds so, really so stupid. What's the name I'm looking at the stance. Oh, which oh, please, oh, please no. Do you have them in front of you? <laughs> please don't make me say it. I do. I don't want to say it. Um, Wait, okay, which? It's me okay. See. So hold on. Let no, me, let me, give me a second. <laughs> it makes all your damage one, and it increases your attack by one. Kaptaris? I like how we're pulsing because I don't. No, I'm trying to read them. Is that so how I know you say one. it? You're talking about Kaptaris? Oh, is, is that what? Is that how you say it? Kaptaris? Uh, yeah, I would say that's how I pronounce it. K A P T A R I S. Kaptars. Yes. Okay. So, yes. so stance Kep- one. Kaptars? Each time a melee attack is made against this unit, the hit roll cannot be re rolled. No, it's not Kaptars. Sorry. Okay. No. No, no, it's not Kaptars. Sorry. Hold on. Hold on. Sorry. Sorry. I'm an idiot. No, no. It's Dakatari. Dakatari? Probably Dakatari. Dakatari. Okay. okay. So stance two, Dakatari. So each time this unit fights, you can and you can choose. This is the cool thing. You can choose the units too, which is amazing. That's tasty. You don't have to choose a unit to do this. But basically, you add an attack, but all of your damage gets reduced to one. So you might be saying, why the hell would you do this? You have damage two weapons. This makes no sense. Well, here's the thing. I'm fighting Death Guard. They all get minus one damage anyway. So my damage two weapons become damage one. So why not go Dakatari stance two? Give myself a free extra attack, and I'm damage one anyway. Boom. So basically, I just attack extra when I'm hitting into the death guard because they're going to reduce my damage to attacks into damage one anyway. Or yeah. um, uh, the Captaris, which is what you were mentioning before. Um, the 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 hit roll cannot be rerolled. You know, one of the biggest mm-hmm. tyranny things is these. Uh, now they take basically uh, these huge leaders that can make you reroll all your hits, not just hit rolls of one all your hits and they'll take like a okay. big squad of 20 gene stealers so that's like 88 something attacks 120 or 88 attacks right which is disgusting oh but yeah. you know they hit on fours or threes and you re-roll and you're gonna hit with pretty much all of them <laughs> captara stance one goes nothing can be re-rolled against this unit at all and Kasodis do have a strategy i'm not sure it'll stay but you get minus one to hit them so <laughs> now they're minus one to hit and you can't yeah. re-roll against them so now that's that's oof. So, so when I look at the Dakarai, um, for yeah. for the second one, as you said, stance two. Each time this unit fights, it can select to use this ability. So, is it on one unit, or is this an army wide? No, it's the entire rule? army. Army wide rule. So I can say, so my Telemon, let's say, does does he does four damage? I may, you know, declare Dakarai stance two. My Telemon charges. I'm not going to give him stance two. He's just going to be unstanced so he's punching with damage four fists but my but, spear dudes who just charged in a death guard oh god mm, yeah, but your whole army is on the same stance if they choose to use it technically so the whole army yes is on the stance but i can okay. select which units are in that stance well yeah but you can't choose one of them to be in darker i one and some other units in darker i two hold on this leads me now that's a perfect thing you just said that because today i'm skipping one of the things i'm skipping the sisters for now because they released today shield hosts so shield hosts are basically your different um they're kind of like your factions and custodies not really but whatever i'll just say it like that so we were wondering like if this is all about custodians what do you do with shield hosts so now the shield hosts literally modify one of the stances one of the six stances and they improve them so for example if you are um let me see here if you are so i play shadow keepers which kind of sucks because they didn't preview shadow keepers at all but let's say um well, let, let's um, go through are, the actual uh, rule. Let's discuss what the yeah, actual yeah. shield so, host fighting style is. Yeah. So, for example, you have a Magna Imperator, right? Not, not for example. Let's is, actually go through the rule. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's the rule yeah. in front of us. So, yeah. shield host. Yeah. So you have Magna Imperator. Uh, so it gives you very much like it does right now in the Ninth Edition Codex. It'll give you two bonuses. Let's say this is army wide. So you get um, each squad, each unit is selected to shoot or fight. It can reroll one of its hit wounds or one of the wound rolls when it was when it was the unit's attacks. So basically, this is what the salamanders have, and it's very okay. spicy. 
re rolling one. It's a free reroll per unit, which is yeah. excellent. Uh, but the trait two, which is oh my lord, have mercy on my soul. It is a four plus. Uh, feel no pain against mortal wounds, which says, "Oh, that's stupid. Who does mortal wounds?" Well, every psyker army ever in the yeah, game, no, of like Grey Knights, wounds, yeah. who are big yeah, on that's, that's exactly. So this is spicy. Yeah. So that's a cool thing. That's that's a shield host, right? And this is a new shield host, by the way. This is this was not an old shield host. This is a completely mm -hmm. new one. But what? A, but this is where it comes down to. See, so you see here it says Marshal Kata Rendax. Yes. So this is what I was talking about. So what will happen is it will modify that fighting style. So once per battle, right? So during this battle, you can activate this ability. And when you are in, in Rendak stance, either one or two, right? Mm -hmm. Or the Kata of Rendak, sorry, my fault. If you're in Kata stance, or Kata stance of Rendax, you can yeah. uh, okay. both so time. Yes. So for example, I think they previewed... Uh, Dreadhost. Dreadhost has. Uh, uh, I was mentioning Dakar Terai, right? Um, Dreadhost has um, Marshal Kata Dakar Terai. And one of the turns for that entire turn. Okay. But also, so so basically, you you yeah, it's really that's really really good. Um, or one of my favorite things right now that people were talking about, people have like really really gone crazy over is um, Solar Watch. So Solar Watch never really was used, sadly. Um, it's a really cool army, but or shield host, but no one really used it. It's supposed to be the speed shield host. Mm -hmm. It's it's what White Scars basically became. But now they have a warlord trait that says any Solar Watch infantry unit within six inches of this warlord until the end of that phase, it's able to charge and advance. It can charge in the turn and advance. That is disgusting. Yeah, that's so. Fair. That's so Venatari, screw it, Venatari. Venatari, move twelve, right? So they're within six inches of the warlord. Mm. And screw it, run the warlord. Who cares? Get in closer. They have they have these pistols. Shoot the pistols. Mm. Um advance them another six, right? And cause and then charge them. Charge them. It, it's just it that's just So I just want to step in here and mention that we had a small hiccup in the recording. Um, for some reason, the, the software essentially stopped. So we tried to pick up about right where we had left off. Um, the audio doesn't seem entirely seamless, but the overall effect is that we didn't actually lose any material. So sorry for that. Hopefully next time it goes a little smoother. All right. Sorry about that. I, I guess uh, our recording service kind of stopped real quick. So, um, I'm not sure where it cut off, but what I was saying about the advancing and charging is, mm. is, is you can, this warlord can essentially, you know, you can advance the unit and charge, which is massive on a small board. Yeah. And with custodies or heavy melee army, it, that's, I, I cannot describe how awesome this makes me feel as a custodies player. Now, a lot of people are complaining because it makes it super complex and blah, 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 blah. But honestly, I mean, again, part, pardon language, but fuck them. This is this is so fluffy. This is so cool. Um, and because you're playing with so many little models anyway, this makes it seem like really cool. Like you're doing a lot of stuff, you know? Yeah. Um, and then the last preview for Custodes, which I saved it. Oh my god, the juiciest for last. Oh my lord, have All mercy right. on my soul. No, no, no. This is this is big. This is big. So, Sisters of Silence. Okay. So they're, they're big into they're big with custodians. They're supposed to be together. They're supposed to work together, uh, and they never did. And in, in, uh, in the game, right? They never really Why worked is that? together game wise. So now, not only are they basically getting, uh, they didn't have the same keywords. Um, mm -hmm. They didn't really mesh well. Some some tournament women army still uh, brings sisters of sounds just to kind of stop psychic powers and stuff. But honestly, it's it's been they've not been you know, good. and they don't have an HQ choice either. They're just kind of oddly placed. So, a couple of things here. One, they have an HQ choice now. Like, this, okay. what the? This is, this is like, first of all, they had an HQ choice in 30K. So, everyone was hoping that they would just do this, and they did. The Knight Centura, and she is a beat stick. I mean, five wounds, hits on twos, uh, shoots on twos, four attacks, leadership nine. Also, I want to point out four attacks. Um, <laughs> So everyone's saying, you know, Christina's going to get more attacks. They better damn well, because my sister of silence has almost the same amount of attacks as the custodies general. That's a problem. Yeah, that's a fluff problem. I, I, I thought they, so, yeah, they believed it was plus one attack stick. on things. I thought I read that. 
Yeah, I think this is either plus one. Yeah, it is. It is part most likely. Um, but now, so yeah, so now she's an HQ. You could have a nice cheap HQ that still does something. Um, um, and again, you know, they got your tactics that's ripped straight out of you know what they do now, which is nice. Um, speaking of HQs, though, I'm kind of jumping around. But speaking of HQs, Alea. So Valerian and Alea. I love Valerian and Alea. They're two. Um, Special characters you can take. They sucked. They sucked so much. Uh, <laughs> Why were they They didn't they have bad? custodies rules. Okay. They didn't have to, they actually they have the wrong keywords. You can't even take them custodies. They never they never uh, like they, they, 200 them? points. They're 200 points. Um no, they're still 200 points. That that was actually no, the no, I mean the and, they, and they, they never, never FAQ'd FAQ'd their keywords. keywords. They just okay. oh no, 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 no. They never did. Um so we were like wondering, like, what the hell? You know, the, the, the cool little they're they're good models to put on the shelf, but that's about it. Well now. We don't know anything about Valerian, but Alea can be taken separately. So you don't actually have to take Valerian. You can just take Alea if you want. And she's a named character. And they gave her some, they gave like one of the previews of her rules, which is what in the hell? So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so she fights first, which okay. is a super powerful rule. That that's that's ridiculous. And they, she goes before chargers. So she will literally now you might be saying, okay. So she goes first, but you know what? Kill her. Right? Mm-hmm. Whatever. Because maybe maybe you don't choose her. Maybe you, you know so maybe something slows her down. Whatever. Let's say you you make her attack last. So what happens is when you attack first, you attack last. Then you become attack normal, right? Yeah. So you go in the normal step of the phase. Um, so she dies, and you're like, ah, oh, that sucks. She's a pretty powerful. Doesn't matter. This model is destroyed in the fight phase before she was selected to fight. Don't remove her. She still attacks. <laughs> she, st- she still attacks. So she still goes, oh, am I I'm dead, am I? Nah, I don't believe it. And she still attacks and kicks the crap out of people. So it's just, that's what, <laughs> that's awesome. Um, and so I, that was just the HQ choices, Dave. And I'm like, okay, yeah. that's pretty cool. We get an HQ choice. Sisters of Silence are now troops. Or some of them are, some of them are. Whoops, some of them are. So prosecutors, the Bolter sisters, are troops. Which, that's... Uh, I can't uh, go into how massive that is, uh, but it's All a cheap troop choice, stock. which is is. Oh yeah, no, it's gone. Thankfully, I have sixty of them, but yeah, no, they're gone. Oh my they're, God, they're 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 they're. Yeah, twenty twenty twenty. Uh, Vigilators, which are the Sword Sisters, uh, are elites, which eh, kind of sucks because elites is already such an overgrown um, piece of of custodies. There are a lot of good elite choices. Unless wardens change, maybe wardens become troops. I don't know. But elites right now, there's like I think there's twelve, and with vigilantes, thirteen or fourteen now choices for elites. It's 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 bloated, it's bloated as it stands. And then okay. witch seekers, witch seekers are fast attack, um, which is also pretty damn cool because with now you, if you take like a brigade, you can now take witch seekers or not a brigade, like a battalion. Witch seekers go in fast attack, so it doesn't take a slot. And witch seekers, by the way, are are flamers. They're flamers. Yeah, I see that. Yeah. Um, oh, I. But yeah, no. So, so you now have access to cheap troops, which was a big problem with custodies. You now have access to an HQ that is not a custodian character. You know, not a custodian character um, who's still a beat stick. She's still pretty good. This is this is. I, so, <sighs> so one like, I, out of listen out of all the yeah, go ahead. One that, so, so one that sounds like then you could actually run a Sisters of Silence army if you want, where before it kind of sounds like you couldn't if they had no troops. No, they had no troops. Now you can actually legit run a Sisters of Silence army. Right. Now, my dream, you, you should get <laughs> if Forge World releases rules for the, um, the uh, oh my God, the name is escaping me. Holy it's crap. Big uh, if, the if you're saying Forge World rules. He, yeah, no, 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 because Forge World did say it was going to update with the Custodies Codex. They have to. They, they literally have to, or else it makes no sense. Because they have to take the katas, you know? Mm. Um, if Forge World makes rules for the Acquisitor, which is the Big Sister's black tank, the Dune-looking vehicle from Forge World, okay. you might have to call 911, because I would probably have a stroke right then and there. <laughs> <laughs> I would legitimately probably die at that moment in time. Because I my, my joy sensors would just probably explode. It, I I don't even know what I would do. That I would probably yeah. You you just got too many of them. That's all it boils down to. You just got two. No, no. Well, no, I got I only got two. I only got two inquisitors, but the inquisitors I don't like rhinos. In 40k they take rhinos, 
I prefer the 30K, which is the Inquisitors, those big, goofy-looking Dune look ve- the Dune vehicles. Mm-hmm. Um, and they don't have rules, so I just kind of use them as rhinos, even though you're not supposed to. Because mm-hmm. um, you know they're, they're bigger. So it's, but it's actually a detriment against me because you could see it more. Um, but uh, no, no, absolutely. Like, oh my god, this uh, I I am happy with what they've put out. Now I will mention Gene Steeler Cult as well because I yeah. don't play Gene Steeler Cult, but 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 um, have you yes. seen what they? So, so I've looked the crossfire rule. No? I do want to actually just go through the rule. I don't want to yeah, just yes, discuss around. I do actually want to go through the rule because I think it's yeah. it works. But I think no, no, no. I go through it. Go ahead. Um, so the rule: whenever a unit with this, so they gave them a rule called crossfire. <laughs> Yeah. It says whenever a unit with the crossfire keyword shoots and scores at least five hits or a hit with a damage characteristic other than one. So if you hit him with a big weapon, it counts as well. Then they exactly. gain a crossfire marker. It's it's similar theoretical concept as a marker light. Once an enemy yeah. has one of these markers, it becomes especially vulnerable to attack. First, any other crossfire further crossfire units shooting at them get plus one to hit rolls. Then so I'm gonna pause right there real quick. Okay. So I'm gonna pause, I'm gonna pause. Mm-hmm. That's massive already. A big oh, problem absolutely. with the Gene Steeler cult is they hit on fours. A lot of their big rail rifles, a lot of the big their, their I'm not gonna call them last cannons, but they're essentially last cannons, hit mm-hmm. on fours for shooting. Yep. Um their buggies, the, the funny enough, the one in the picture, hit on fours, which sucks. Yeah. Hitting on threes or getting minus one to hit and then hitting on fours still, because the plus one to hit is massive. That is a massive buff. But anyway, continue. Sorry. Yep. I just wanted That's to point great. that out. Oh, no, it's huge. If you're getting a plus one to hit essentially army wide, if you're willing to shoot that unit, if you have this rule. Now, we don't know everything that has this crossfire rule. My guess, troops, some things like that, but we don't know exactly what. Probably not the vehicles or anything, yeah. I would assume. Probably going to be the troops. Probably going to be the troops, the core. And then right, there's a way to have them, them yeah. be exposed, which I, I don't think they use the right word. I think they use literally the exact opposite word okay so how does a car target become exposed if you draw a line from the attacking unit's base to another friendly crossfire model within sight and the line passes over the targeted unit that targeted unit is exposed wait a minute wait a minute wait oh i just realized something okay i'm gonna realize i'm gonna tell you something i just had a light bulb in my head but um so you mentioned that uh, if you draw a line from an attack unit base to another crossfire unit, right? Uh, so in other it words, to... it, it's poorly worded, but he, here is how I understand it and how their picture shows. Their picture exactly. shows two units, and it shows they're trying to shoot at this tank. The unit, in, uh, the idea is that it's already been a unit that has crossfire on it, so the tank has crossfire. Yes. The unit in the back is shooting at the tank, and when they're doing their shots, I'll they're crossing. The hmm? No, 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 no. That's not what that is. No, no, no. Okay, so the unit uh, to the left has crossfire, and they have crossfired on these tau in the middle. The tank does not have crossfire, but because this unit, if you draw a line from the tank to the unit, right, that has crossfire, it crosses over the enemy unit. Now, and sorry, I should have let you read the rest of the rule. Um, if you if you're exposed, you add one to their wound roll. Yes. Um, because this the, the tank is part of the gene stealer cult, and the one on the Got left it. is part of the gene stealer cult. Because the tank can draw a line, or rather, the crossfire unit can draw a line to this tank that is trying to shoot middle. That tank now has plus one to wound you on the tau a, unit. You draw a line from the attacking unit's base to another friendly crossfire model within sight, and the line passes over the targeted unit. Oh, okay. All right, drew I, the arrow wrong. Yeah. They, they reversed the arrow. I just realized what they did. Yeah. They reversed the arrow. The arrow should be facing the other way. Yes. It, it um, should be from the tank to the unit. E- either way is fine. All it really means then is if you sandwich the unit between you. That's yep. that's what exposed you, means. You have an enemy on each yes. side. Yes. And I mean, so adding one okay. to wound, just like adding one to hit is like, duh. Well, at, but, that point, um, at that point, you'd already have one to hit. So you'd have plus one to hit. And now you're also, yeah. in addition, getting adding, plus one exactly. to hit. Exactly. But what's really cool about this, and I, one of my friends, uh, Jake, pointed this out, is this actually kind of, very much like the Custodes as well, this kind of forces you to play, almost forces you to play tactically, like strategically. You oh, have sure. to, and it almost forces you to take crossfire units, but also mobile units. 
Mm -hmm. um, and this forces you to do pincer attack and forces you to do the Colts outflank rules, so on and so forth. Um, so I kind of like that. It actually kind of. It's very fancy for them. Yes, but it also Absolutely fits the I world. like it's tactical. I like that. It's, now I'm hoping, I'm hoping, I'm hoping people don't get become like you know assholes and they're like, I mean, yeah, this doesn't cross over my unit by the millimeter. You messed up. I'm really well, hoping we don't run into people like that. Um, you no, know, you say well, but well, no, no, no. So here's here's what I was going to say. It in 40k, it's model by model, right? So. It, I, I guess it's technically possible that say, because is it by the unit? It's the unit. It's the, it's, the, it's the footprint of the unit. So you see how they went like in the second picture. They went from the edge of the most farthest you closest. Unit yeah, to but, the edge. So to, let, to the base. So let's say in that second so picture if, that those models were halfway between. Yeah, they're partially up. Are you exposed? And they're, yes, they're exposed. Because so I, as I, soon I, as, I, as I one it. of them fits it, or does it yes. have to be most? So it's it not says, per model basis. It's a whole unit. It says, uh, no, yeah, over the targeted unit. I'm reading over the targeted unit. So if we, if if you get one of the tiniest models of that tau unit in between them, exposed for so everyone's it, shot, uh, even for models that yes. don't wouldn't be exposed. Exactly. Now this All is where right. I'm getting weirded out. Well, hold on, this is where I'm getting weirded out. So let's say that let's say there's two tanks, yeah. right, back to back. And one tank shoots, kills that one model that's stepping over the line. I kill that model. Are they still exposed? Because now the other tank might not have the same line to them. Does that make sense? So do you have to keep rechecking the exposed to, line? To me, um, my assumption would probably. be, and, and, I, and I think they need to FAQ some of this because I think once the book comes out, or, or maybe it's worded better in the book, maybe there's more detail, but right yeah, now, to very, me, yeah, yeah. I think it's very poorly explained in terms of okay is it unit but is it each model so i i cover one i can hit one guy with one of my guys you are now exposed but if something like I said if something happens to that one model well if it's still the same activation you you fire one so so oh, no. in a so normal thing of 40k now in yeah. normal thing of 40k are you do you check everything in the beginning when you're going to shoot with so, a unit yes Yes. So if if I'm activating that tank and that tank has ten guns, all ten guns shoot at the same time. Now you roll them separately, but they shoot at the same time. So even if I remove that model at the beginning, it's no, still, exposed still exposed for the entire Absolutely. time of that tank. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, let's say there's another tank you directly not behind anymore. it. No. Exactly, and it's a different unit. So that's that's where I'm thinking. Might no, happen. no. I think that's clear. That that's entirely okay. clear. If that model's not there, you it's not exposed because it's not there anymore. Now, to be fair, this is like, because uh, I'm scrolling down, what's really cool is, like, you would think, okay, that's cool. Crossfire is cool. It's a gimmick. It's nice. But what I find even cooler is that they added, as people hate stratagems, okay. people love stratagems, whatever, but they're here to stay. They give yep. stratagems that play off the, the, the crossfire. So, for example, as a custodies player, as a custodies player, um, I'm looking at the advance and charge, and we already kind of theory testing something. So one of the things you could take is for custodians, you could take a Aqualon guard, which are mm -hmm. uh, terminators, Aqualon terminators, which are the, the big beefy 50 mil terminators, 50 mil base terminators, right? You've probably seen them there. They're the ones I showed you, the ones you didn't like the look of. Um, they could take claws, right? Okay. So that gives them five attacks. Then you give them kata stance, six attacks. You give them the banner of plus one attack, seven attacks, right? Mm -hmm. They advance and charge, blah, 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 blah. But you can also give them flamers, right? So let's say I'm going to charge that unit of Terminators. Now, they have seven attacks each in close combat. I maybe can tank that, maybe not, but whatever, right? But what I can definitely not tank is if I have six Terminators there, I can't tank six D6 flamers, you know, in Overwatch that are automatically hitting because they're flamers. That sucks, right? I can't charge Gene Sealers into that. I'm going to die. Mm -hmm. Well, you little shit. I'm going to crossfire you. And then I'm going to spend one CP to say, you cannot overwatch me. Right. So, that, so that's the covering fire. Like I said, it's one that's, CP. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, it, one that's CP. Right. It says you use this stratagem in your charge phase. So that's one enemy unit that has a crossfire marker on it. Until the end of the turn, that unit cannot fire overwatch, set to defend, or perform heroic interventions. Also major, by the way. Also major with your, because custodians can like 
there's a, one of the Katas dances, I'm sorry, one of the shield hosts allows every unit in the army to heroically intervene if they wanted to. Um, You're allowed to speak of things in general. It doesn't have to be how it relates to your particular army. Yeah, no, oh, no, well, I'm speaking, I don't know. <laughs> um, let me see, who else heroically? No, because that's a big thing with custodians. Like, if, if you charge one of my units, I can position it so that my other units can come in and attack you, even yeah. though you didn't want to charge them. Um, so that's big for shutting me down. But that's also good for, like, let me see. Well, who would that be good for? Oh, I guess Tyranids. Other Tyranid forces. Um, who else would want I mean, to enter It's combat? just general and good. Not being able to fire Overwatch good. means Overwatch. if they have flamers, that's you can't nuts. stop them. Heroic yeah. intervention. Yeah, if someone's got a you know big, beefy boy in their room, yeah. They're good. They might want to do that. Because your models mm-hmm. aren't survivable if you're Gene Stiller Colts. You know, you're, you're not winning oh. on, on, on protracted battles. So the less you no, can not. get hit, the better. And then they also have a... Another one CP thing, uh, use a strategy about the first start of the fight phase, select one enemy that has crossfire marker, and with an engagement range of a gene stellar cult, so this, these guys are actually in close combat. Um, mm-hmm. Until the end of that phase, the enemy unit is not eligible to fight uh, until all, so this is fight last. They're not eligible to fight until after all eligible units from your army have done so. So this is literally fight last. This is yep. um, all chargers go. And then we go to the normal non-chargers. It's that one goes, I go, you go. And then after mm-hmm. all that, then that unit goes. And you and put it on the last, unit that you plan to kill. Yeah, and if you fight last is, 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 is stupidly, like, that is stupidly good. In Sigmar and also in 40k. Yeah, if you, if you um, can get that on it, it, a hero, then you can fight them with impunity. They're not going to hurt you. Yeah. Not even that. So put it on a troop choice. Put it on a troop choice. Yeah. Here are blade guard vets, right? Uh, for space marines, put them on blade. The person has five blade guard vets, buffed up with a chaplain. They will, you know, they will fuck shit up. All right. Okay. I'm gonna charge you with, you know, twenty gene stealers. Right? They'll probably survive that. But you know what? They won't survive. Gene stealers attacking, and then also gene stealers attacking again, <laughs> for another, for another, for more strategy points. Hmm. So. And then after the Gene Sealers double attack, then they can go. That's that's insane. Yeah. That's I love it. I love it. It's fluffy. It's super cool. Um, it, and it's these are the kind of things that make Gene Stealer Cult better again. <laughs> make Gene Stealer Cult better again. This is the cool stuff. You know what I mean? Oh, and, and what's nice about that is this start of the fight phase. So it's after the charges. Because obviously if you charged, you know, short of some other crazy stuff, you're going to be fighting before the unit you charged. But this is also helps out that unit that was already in the combat. You know, you've already yeah. been in a combat because you got charged last turn. You still got some people left. Well, they're going to fight last. You will guarantee that you get your swings in before that unit maybe kills you. It's just, you know? I, I love it. 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 This is, and you know, people, I love how people are complaining how it's making Gene Stiller. Well, first of all, to the people complain, listen, I don't care. I don't know you. I'll, they I'll don't complain even about you. Cr- they don't even know what units get crossfire. <laughs> Well, first of all, first of all, you stupid little shits. All right, genes to the cults were already complicated as it is. Do you not fucking remember the markers, the uh, the invisible markers you had to place on the table, and then remember what markers the markers were? Fuck out of here. They they already had these like really cool sneaky ass rules that never really kind of s- transferred over to ninth edition nicely. Never really transferred to eighth edition either nicely. Um, so first of all, shut up. Second of all, to those <laughs> to those people um, arguing that custodians are super complicated, listen to the little shits. I play with 13 fucking models, okay? If my dude wants to start doing some Taekwondo shit in the middle of a 40k universe and then switch to Aikido, his ass is going to... Like, that's awesome, okay? Like, I don't... I, people, people complain well, about everything. Well, <laughs> one, it's the internet people will complain. Christ. I think the complaints are more from yeah, people true. like when I play you, here's another thing I have to track. So I have to track what all your models do. I have to track what your stratums are. I had to track what your your you know storm host or your battalion or whatever it's called I has agree, to do. Yes. And now okay. I have to also track that you've secretly determined three different stances, which all have two different abilities each, but also you happen to choose this particular host that gets both of them one turn and all that. It's when I hear the complications or the argument. bloat, that's what I think of. It's not for the player of the army. No, it is bloat. It is bloat. It is bloat. Oh, it's absolutely bloat. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it's for the other people. Because because keep in mind, like, okay, you guys have that, and those rules are very cool for you, but other armies don't. And the big problem with exactly. that is that means that when you're going to play a different army, my knowledge of what Custodes does doesn't help me. 
I now have to go wait, figure wait, out wait, what's wait, your gonna... new brand thing that you do in your army. Hold on, hold on, though. I will say that some armies do do this. So, like, Space Marine Doctrines will okay, so, do this. Yes, yeah, Space Marine. And, and they, Necron Doctrines do this. Or not, what are they called? Necron Protocols? I think they're called Protocols. protocols. Yes. yes. Mechanicum Doct... Uh, hold on. Mechanicum... <sighs> I had the name before. Oh, it's whatever the name well, is. I, yeah. Yeah. That's so fine. they do it. So not, I mean, not all armies do it. Like Harlequins don't do it, and they're a top tier army. Um, Imperial Guard don't do it. But there are some armies that do this, um, and it is annoying that it kind of adds to the bloat. But mm. listen, I'm 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 going to be a little biased here. I'm a custodians player. I I'm playing with thirteen models. The fact that my guys can like flip those martial arts things and kind of that's just that to me is just so cool and the it's question would be, you know me yeah, yeah. <laughs> but funny. if you weren't yeah. a custodes player w would you want to have that extra potential complication when you face them so if that wasn't your arm speaking from the other side speaking from the other side what would annoy me and i don't know one in the store would do this dave and i'm hoping well, no one would do this remember, at the it's more broad maybe where we play exactly people, exactly but i'm really hoping someone doesn't like you know secretly write it down but then like change it in the middle of the game so that okay. it benefits well, them because yeah. the whole point of the the, the katas is you know you choose one two three and it goes in that order once you hit two you can't go back to one i mean i don't know any stratagems yeah. or maybe trajan changes it but the point is you go one two three you go yeah. in that order meaning if in turn three you're in kata three sec uh, stance two kata stand that's it you're done you, you can't you're in the final stance for the rest of the game you cannot change that Right. You know, it, cheating aside, let's assume no cheating. Yeah. So, so that's fine. Everyone's playing nice and honest. Let's assume that. To me, I, I, I would start potentially having certain problems with the blow in terms of, wait. So, what are all these things you do? Okay, I got to track all that stuff because I have to assume you know your army well because there's always that chance that the person you're playing is misinterpreted because bloat obviously can cause you know, issues of unintentional problems. You want to unintentionally do something you're not supposed to do. But also just, you know, to play a game fairly, you, you both sides need to know all the rules. I need to know my rules, yes. and you need to know well, my rules to play truly fairly. Honestly, that's one of the big problems with 40K right now is, is yeah. for, um, uh, I don't think we ever talked about this, but I know I was talking about this with a couple of other people, how, like, I, I, this the big thing was, like, stratagems, you know. I, I, Custody is one of the smallest armies. Probably has also, I think, one of the smallest amount of stratagems. Still has like twenty stratagems. No, I might so only many. use seven in a game, and I might it might actually only be four, and they're the same ones over and over again. But still, knowing that I could pull out of my ass one stratagem that never gets used but might get used this game, that's annoying. That's annoying. and that's just Custody is one of the smallest armies, playable armies. I get no, sorry, Imperial Knights the smallest but even imperial knights have a shit ton of stratagems and um like it yeah so anyway it, it, i understand 100 percent, and i agree with you 100 percent that 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 rules bloat does suck and the fact that and i i argue this with one of my friends all the time um because it and i haven't been to a tournament in ages to be quite honest because of this because yeah. i don't want to go to a tournament i don't know it I, I don't know all the tricks of what's the meta army right now dark eldar i don't know all the tricks of dark eldar I don't know even after the changes, I think they still are. Even after the changes, and they changed mm -hmm. before I was able to play in a tournament with them. So I definitely have no idea. I just yeah. look at I just look at like battle reports and try to guess from there. Um, and even some of the top players don't know. So okay, this is a, not going off topic, but um, there was a recent tournament where um, I don't know Probably if you watched it or topic. heard about it. Yeah, always off topic. Um, there was a recent tournament where um, an orc player. He was he's one of the best orc players in the world. Wow, his mm -hmm. name Siegel. See, I think it was Siegler. I uh, was playing against a uh, orc flying list, and he was, and so he was playing a dark Eldar. I don't think it was Siegler, but just bear with me. Uh -huh. um, turn turn one, charges in his dark Eldar in an attempt to lock down uh, the, the army because if he doesn't, he, he'll get shot to death, uh, and he'll probably die in turn one. We're talking like probably eighteen hundred points dead in one turn. Hmm. However, he didn't know that the guns can can literally just freely. Just go away and still do it. He thought he could lock them down and he forgot a rule 
um, that that the ta- that these artillery pieces could do. So the artillery pieces pulled back, and his army literally just died turn one. It was a turn one end game, and this was a top. T- this was streamed for Games Workshop. This is a really high level tournament, uh, and it was embarrassing. It's embarrassing, not for him, but it's more embarrassing for the game because it's yeah. like, oh, I forgot this one rule, very niche specific rule. And did, did you watch it? I, I lost. I didn't it. watch this. Yes, I did. Okay. Oh, I absolutely was, was watched there, this. Was there any? Uh, could you hear table discussion or no? Oh yeah, no. He asked, you know, what units can do, what units can this, okay. but because his army plays on the fact of like you cannot retreat or you can't retreat far enough or I get locked mm-hmm. in combat, right? He was betting on that. Like it, it very rarely does his army come across someone that can can. The, the, um, stop that from happening yeah exactly and this very niche orc unit was able to do that um and it's not that he didn't ask the opponent it's just that he forgot the rule it was it was a misplay it was a misplay and this is again this is a player who i respect who who is a really cool guy um and i've met him i think once um but just it 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 was so painful to see because it's like and then of course the orc player goes and he literally wipes about I think I think it was eight nineteen hundred points of the army mm-hmm. in in one shooting turn. Now, mind you, GW this was after before the nerf of GW take so you can only take two planes, and so because I think it was also like six planes in the orc list, whatever. But the point is, but he literally lost because of that one tiny misplay, and that feels bad. That feels bad. You don't want. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny enough going to the topic we had today, ironically, but um, it feels bad. It feels bad. Um, but yeah, that's all, that's it for. Gene Stiller called to custodians. I mean, I went probably a, a much longer rant than I needed, but as a custodians oh, yeah. player, and <laughs> as, as a 30K player, because 30K, I love custodians in 30K because they have a much more fluffier feel in, than, for, than in 40K. They, they have more of a, a character to them. Um, but I kind of hate it because legions get like these special, um, um, oh my God, see, this is why I don't play, le- I don't play legions, but they get these special, I'm going to, they're not called attachments, they're all rights of war. They get, you know, we talk about this. They get special these rights of war. Um, then there's generic ones, but each legio has access to a special, unique right of war that kind of changes up. Like world leaders can take a generic one, or they could take their special world leader one, which you know makes them all crazy, and they could turn on their nails and stuff like that, which are those implants in their brains. Custodies don't have that. Custodies are just custodies. There's no shield hosts like they are in 40k. So I like the fact that not only are there shield hosts in 40k, but now there's almost like, well, katas. <laughs> that's a, that's um god yes yeah, that that's okay so i'm gonna stop when, stop when the new custodes book comes out <laughs> i we'll will do a rant. review we, we'll make you nice and happy and we'll do a review oh, of custodes book when it comes out i mean you'll probably have to find me in the hospital somewhere but yes that's it, probably it, true we'll, we'll, we'll get you back don't worry modern medicine Bro, is is amazing <laughs> if inquisitors come out with freaking rules oh my god lord have mercy on my soul <laughs> literally die dave yeah. oh man oh. okay um what the hell else what were we, we were talking about we were talking news jesus christ <laughs> yeah this has been news so so oh, we'll just oh, mention oh. the a- aos stuff quickly we'll Ooh, we'll go through some yeah. rules on dragons because i would like to go through some of the rules of these dragon boys but yeah, we'll leave, do that yeah. next week um yeah, yeah so do that next week. they are on pre-order they should be coming out um i believe it's like next week they're actually coming out although some stores i'm sure have it but they're coming out um yeah, I think we'll probably just save since we ran a little long with the the custodes love. I think we'll save them for next week. But I I do want to talk about them because I mean we're talking about models that sent that got changes before the models even came out. More than one, multiple changes before the models even came out because they looked at it. People were obviously playing them, play testing with them, without having the actual models and seeing that there was issues. Um, GW has also said that when they when they came out with that and they changed some points on some of these. Uh, the storm drake guards and the nitroconus um they said oh you know in 40k we did this essentially update thing where we changed some points we made a little bit of rules thing they're going to do the same thing it's supposed to be out in december who knows when but obviously when it comes out we'll cover that um but i i think that i think that's plenty for news because i cover um other news with the other things originally we were going to do um Marvel Crisis Protocol earlier in the week, but that, you know, just am not being able to. So hopefully next week we'll do that and we'll be able to cover the uh, November updates because that got a a lot of changes, including like 30 models got changed. 
Really? So, wow. Yeah. I didn't realize that. Um, also, I just should point out Dragon it. Pricing, not bad. I should I should point out Dragon Pricing, not bad. I, 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 for, uh, we'll cost talk wise next week. Yeah, cost wise, uh, uh, money wise, money wise, money wise. Not um, bad for the points. I still think they're too much, but points wise, you, you get a lot of points for the money you put into them. I'll give it that. All right. All right, yeah. all right, not bad. A lot of news, Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Freaking custodies. Yeah. Well, I mean, you, you right. wanted to go to go deep into the custodies. All right, so we will. Uh, oh, that's not my fault. <laughs> uh, so, so we'll we'll take a short break and then we will come back and we'll head off into the main part of the discussion. All right, and we're back. So, um, at this point, we're going to discuss the main topic for tonight. Oddly enough, that main topic was not custodes. Um, it felt like that. But it wasn't. Um, so for the main topic tonight, uh, part of the part of the impetus for having done this, so I played a game of Age of Sigmar last Sunday. I played. I it was uh, we did fifteen hundred points. I played my cruel boys versus his iron draws, um, including a rogue idol. Wait, you had a rogue idol, or no, no, or... no, 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 no. I I played against a rogue idol. I do not own a rogue idol currently. Oh. I had to oh, get no. one. It's it's oh. actually. It's quite good. I love Rogue Idols. They're great. I, I, I realize now <laughs> looking back some things I could have done to definitely make the game a lot closer. One of them, I was able to redeploy a unit, but I protected the wrong flank. I did not think about how quickly the Rogue Idol moved. So he was into my lines turn one, and I had positioned my line rather poorly. So when he got into him turn one, it kind of locked down a whole side of the board. Yeah, he died. He, he took, about, he took yeah. about an extra turn than I would have liked. But he ended up dying. But he took a lot of things with him. He kind of crippled that side. Um, we ended up calling the game, I think, right as we were about to go into turn three. Because just, I had lost too much. I was down on points and had lost too many units to be able to pull it back. Um, where if I had a few more units, then hey, maybe I could still play it out. Maybe I could still grab some points and all. Um, but so so what we want to discuss is the main thing. is more of just you know trying to, you know, getting better at your game. Handling losses. What do you get out of them? Um, but also just, you know, how to work on improving your game. Cause that was a case where I made a mistake the previous time I had played against Iron Jaws and I made a pretty similar mistake. I, I made a little bit better of a decision in one way, but not the best decision I needed. And without that other better decision, it, it kind of made it a, a moot point of what I could do. So okay. we, we want to talk about that. Th we'll start with handling loss because yes. that that's okay. where you learn the most. You learn the most that's when you lose. One. So. Yeah. So, what are some good things that actually happen when you lose? What's something good not that a, happens? Not a goddamn thing. You're a loser, and you just not. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Um, no, no. So, like, listen. So, what's something loses. good? Yeah, everyone loses. Um, it happens, especially when you learn the game. Hell, we talked about this when we did the uh, podcast on Infinity, especially oh, when yeah, you're starting you lose off Infinity constantly. Yeah, yeah. It, it just happens. So, listen. It's losing sucks. And everyone hates it, but you did. There is good. I mean, um, look, listen, you learn. First you learn of all, like, you, just mentioned, you learn from your mistakes. Absolutely. Um, I mean, this is true. In, yeah, yeah, this is true in real life, and this is true in, in mini wargaming. Mm -hmm. You know, I can go off on a rant on the history as a history teacher. Um, I oh, actually funny slight side note we just learned about um we're learning about the revolutionary war mm. or causes of and you know one of the big things is you know george washington in the revolutionary war was a much better soldier and much better general than he was when he fought spoiler in the french and indian war yeah when he was a british uh a, a, a commander in there uh he learned from his mistakes uh during the french and indian war and it's very apparent when he fought the british in the, in the revolutionary war so stuff like that that's a real life example but it, even in the miniature war it, it game, sticks with you, know, you better from your when mistakes. you can sit there and say oh you know not not necessarily you want to you want to steer clear of the idea of i lost because i made this one decision rarely is it one decision it could be but that, that's usually more rare it's i made this poor decision and that hurt what i did or i did this and Oh man, I see why that was a bad idea. You won't make that same. Usually, you won't make that same mistake again, especially if that mistake is what really cost you the game or cost you. You know the ability to win. Yes, and, and I mean, let's be honest. It's like mm -hmm. there, there. Sometimes there's stupid mistakes, 
And there's yep. like little tiny, and we mentioned, I mentioned this before, you know, they're, they're like, oh, I forgot this rule. Um, but, but again, each one teaches you. Um, I mean, hell, I'll go back to infinity. Uh, mm-hmm. Infinity is a, is a learning man's game. Um, and every loss you, again, one of my first losses in that game was against uh, one of my friends, Brian. And I learned very quickly that positioning your troops, uh, cause they're, they, they have line of sight, essentially positioning mm-hmm. your troops so that they have 360 line of sight so that no one drops in behind you is super freaking important. Cause sometimes yeah. the person dropping behind you has a uh, martial arts too, which means you cannot react to them dropping behind you. They're stealthed. The old edition, yeah. Uh, so they ninja you in the face. So stuff like, yeah. So the, yeah, the, the, this was older edition, true. Yes, but that's what I'm talking about. Like you learn from your mistakes. Um, um but uh, another oh, ahead, another yeah. useful thing is that you get better. You get better with your army. I feel, or at least you have the chance of getting better with them when you perform poorly with them. It yes. sounds odd, but when you do very agree. well, you you can't necessarily pinpoint why why it went well. Let's assume average dice, yeah, and we'll talk about this later. Like you have to be able to pull away from the dice. You know, let's assume average dice and everything like that. If you if you win, you know, did you you know did you win because of your decisions? Did you win because of a better list? Did you win because your opponent's army was what was not as strong as yours? There's a variety of it. It's hard to pin down when you lose. If if you're willing to analyze it, and um, I've heard this from you know from top tier players, what what a lot of them do if they really want to get good, they keep a book, and they keep a book of what yeah. happened in games that they win, and more importantly, what happens when they lose. You know, and, and essentially when the game is done, um, in X Wing, this is a big thing. Although at X one point in X Wing, I'm not sure if this is still true, but at one point, essentially, they told you you couldn't write notes during a game. There's people like the top players; they'd be writing notes. Wait, 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 wait. really? Yeah, really? Yeah, they didn't want you doing that because I guess they were considering, they, they were worried about maybe about scouting and stuff like that. Um, but they didn't, oh, yeah, they didn't okay, want note okay. storing. But some and, people would do that because you yeah. could mention, okay, I made this choice. It has cost me this this thing, this piece. Maybe I didn't even lose the game, but maybe it cost me a ship that put me in a, a worse position. So even if I pull it out, I need luck as well as skill. I need dice. I need things to help pull this out from me. You know, so I, I, I you, you, you definitely yeah. learn no, more about your army. I think. Yes. And I mean, I mean, like I said, I play custodians now, right? But I've played other armies, Dark Angels, Grey Knights. Um, but I'm going to speak custodians. So that's actually, I think that and Dark Mechanic, have, have, these, are, these are the longest armies I've owned ever. Um, mm-hmm. I have learned. So, yeah, this is actually, I just had this discussion too. I play custodians in eighth edition. Um, mm-hmm. They were not great. <laughs> uh, they were at least a tier C army, and that was if you made some really good saves. They were not a great army, and I lost constantly, constantly. Um, it was bad, but I kept going because one, I loved the army, and two, they were painted. You know, they were, they looked yeah. cool. They were my army when ninth edition dropped. And the biggest change was like the CP. Like now, you, now I have twelve CP instead of three or two wins before I started in eighth edition. <laughs> yeah, I racked up so many wins with that army; it was ridiculous. Um, and it wasn't because they got better. The, the codex didn't change. I mean, sure, the objective scoring changed. They're adorable. So they work against you know work and scoring objectives. But because I've lost that army so much. When the new edition dropped and it focused more on objectives, which is what how I would play the games in the first place, it, it, I it, how do I explain this? I just knew how to play the army. True, I, I was mean, able but, to but shift the, the game army change. to play. Yeah. Yes, but yeah. the idea of me losing consistently, even though I was doing the right thing, when the game changed to how I was playing, I was able to play specifically the custodians very well. Uh, and then, of course, now it's back to losing because you know other armies and balance and stuff like that. But but that beginning of ninth edition, I was racking up win after win after win after win, only because I lost a lot. You know, I lost a lot. I mean, it, it's tactics. It's 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 you you basically get, you, when you're losing. The good thing, like it sounds stupid, right? It sounds stupid, but when you're losing, you learn tactics. Like you do. okay. I charge my my custodian guard into a zone throw squad. Stupid ass idea because they can smite me and they have a three up and vulnerable. 
dumb, right? They will lock me down forever. And I, and I learned that mistake. However, you know, it's not dumb charging a telemon into there because every fist swing kills his own throat. So not only might he need CP to like save his own throat on a three up, but every swing I do will literally just pop his own throat out. And he's got enough attacks that he'll kill his, you know, kill one or two zone throats a turn. So that's tactics or positioning, you know, positioning your army. You know, maybe I shouldn't have put my people there out in the front line. That was really dumb. Let's mm-hmm. try a different game and see how that works. I mean, hell, you got you would learn tactics from your game, right? From your Sigmar game? Uh, yeah. Oh no, I, I you know, with what I did, I I see. I see what I did wrong. I see what I could have done better. No guarantee it would have worked. That's the other thing. I realize, you know, um, I, I, I watched some Star Trek. I was never too huge into it, but I do watch some of it. And one, you know, the the one the one quote by from Patrick Stewart in his while well, he's playing Jean Luc Picard. It's you know, it's possible to commit no mistakes and still lose. It's not weakness that is life. Y- you could play your game perfect and still lose. But that's rare. In a miniature game, there there is no perfect game. You've never played a perfect game in your life. You've probably never played in a perfect game. You've probably never played against an opponent who's played a perfect game. These games have so many rules, so many nuance, and even the movement. When you move a model, it is never truly precise, not at least in a 40K style game. Even when you get to games that have movement tools, when you think of X-Wing or Marvel Crisis Protocol, any of those, they have movement tools, but they're still micro movements of models. They're still a little bit, you know? So it it's possible you do everything you can, you still lose. But you can still get something out of it. You, yeah. You, no one, I don't, as far as I would think, no one's ever played a game where they come out of it and say, I did everything exactly perfect and I still lost. It can happen, but you probably have something you could learn from. I'll be, here. I'll give you the best example. One of my favorite games of all time and one of the oldest games, not one of the oldest games, Battletech. Battletech yep. has the most precise movement in the world. You know why? Because it's hexes. I can yep. move this many hexes and turn this much. There's no cheating there. Right? I can't fudge an extra millimeter. I can't I can't slightly turn my mouth. It's literally I move five hexes. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Mm-hmm. Done. Right. You can't can't fudge that. But dice. Dice yep. happen. I, I lose to my friend John more. I've nothing I've you know, I've never won a game against him. And it no, has yeah, nothing not. to do with it. And it, 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 it nothing to do with tactics. I will play the game. And bring some of the coolest mechs there are. Now it's balanced to it. I'm not gonna get into it, but you basically need calculus to read and figure out like mech to build your own mech. It is balanced to the nth degree. But in that game, I will play a game damn near perfectly. But you know, my opponent will take a small laser, crit it into a side torso, and out of a chance out of 14 slots, crit the one ammunition in the side torso and blow up the mech. <laughs> it, that's life. That's life. I can't even feel bad about that. That's. I mean, it does feel bad a little bit. I'm still salty about it. Um, but no, no. It's, it's, it's like uh, you never you, fight dice. You, Don't fight. Yeah, dice. You, it's literally precise movement, but you can't. Uh, whatever you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah. All right. So 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 what what else is good? You mentioned timing. No, no, I think so you have written that down. What do you mean by timing? Oh oh, I guess. Oh, I did write that down. No, I mean okay. okay so no, so. This one goes more to forty k, I would say. No, actually, That's it goes fine. to other. No, no, it goes to. But timing is um, so um, and this is more for high level play or tournament play. Hmm. Position timing your stratagems or timing your units. You know, some people I've seen lose because they don't time the. Oh, you know what, Titanicus. Perfect. I, perfect example. I know I'm jumping around, but okay. Titanicus. So in Titanicus, I play Legio Furion, um, mm-hmm. which is a traitor's legion, and they have one stratagem for three stratagem points, which is. Massive. You only get five in a game of 1750. So it's what? Yeah. Uh, Three is the it's, highest it's points 70, uh, in general that they ever cost. It, yeah. So this is a massive point of my strategy. I, if I play it, it better work. It, it allows me for one extra heat to shoot an additional weapon. This is mm. massive. And for the entire manable, that is massive. That is that is an extremely destructive stratagem. I need to learn to know when to play it. I timing, literally timing. And I have lost so many games of Titanicus not playing that stratagem at the right time. I'll play it too early. I don't do any damage or I do nothing. I play it too late. I lost my Titan that would really have benefited from it. Oh, too bad. Sucks. It's, it, it, I've learned over the losing of games of Titanicus when to almost exactly play that stratagem. And I still get it wrong, by the way. 
I'll still get this card wrong. I'll still play it maybe too early. And oh no, the Warhounds are out of remember you can't pre you can't pre-measure in that game. So the Warhounds out of range. Oh <laughs> well that, <laughs> that sucks. I can't double shoot my Vulcan Mega Bolters into a void shield. Whoops. Um so, so so to me that 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 almost sounds like it wraps in towards tactics, but we could expand a little bit further for strategy. Because strategy and tactics are not the yeah. same thing. Strategy is your plan, yeah. tactics are what you do to execute the plan. Yeah. Okay. You know. So 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 in there you could even be thinking about in terms of your overall strategy. I have this yeah. strategy that I need to use this by turn three. If I'm not using it by turn three, I have made a mistake. Your ta you know, your your tactic then, you know, would be actually when you implement it or how or your movement and all those sorts of things. But you can learn oh, yeah. more about strategy as well. Like you said, you, you might find that overall plans have to change, especially when we're talking about game systems. If you're talking oh, yeah. about anything from oh, yeah. GW, how many armies there are, you need a strategy, oh, really, if you want to play at high level. You need a strategy for each army. Hell, hell. We just, literally, we just talked about cust uh, custodians, right? The def Selecting the right kata. Oh, the timing there. Selecting the right kata? Kata. 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 Selecting the right kata at the right time for the right match to make sure it goes off at this exact turn. That's going to take a lot of losing to figure that out. That's going to take can, a yeah. hell of a lot of losing. Yeah. You know, if my kata goes off too early, uh, uh, actually, no, early is, no, yeah, early is bad because then I can't go back to it, bar no. any strategies or anything. But yeah, no, that's, that's going to take some, that's going to take some practice. So, so those are some of the, some of the pluses. Um, we probably should have read led with some of the minuses, but I think the minuses, I think most of us know well, them. No, no, I think no, we can gloss over them, them faster. It's a compliment sandwiches. It's a compliment sandwich. You start with the good, and go with the bad, and then you go back to the good. <laughs> no, that's good. Um, all right, so bad. Um, okay, so, I mean, let's hit the nail on the head with the, the elephant in the room. It's salty. It, it, it feels bad. on the person. Some it, people get very true, salty. True, but no, listen, there's always a degree of salt. You can either yeah. range from, like, you can range from minimal salt, like, screw it, that sucks, my dice failed me there, to... You're saltier than the Dead Sea. Like, like there is, there's a, there will, there will always be some sort. I have listen. I've come away from games where I'm like, and you know what? That was a good game. You know, I, I don't mind losing. But I say I don't mind losing. But I'm still, listen. No one wants to lose. You're still salty. You're still a little salty because you remember that one mistake you did in turn one, seven minutes in. Where that micro movement might have screwed you for the rest of the game, it, it just still feels salty, and if it does feel bad to lose, humans in general focus much more on our mistakes than our triumphs. So it is very easy. I mean, I don't, maybe other people don't have anxiety, so maybe people are fine. But most of us, or many of us, I feel, could probably remember a mistake you made 15 years ago. But you don't remember oh, the yes. decision you made yesterday. <laughs> you know, it, it's easier to remember the problem that happened in the game. But our, our memory is selective. You're going to remember that problem you did. But you're not going to remember all the good things that you did in the game or the good decisions you made. Or maybe some of the bad decisions your opponent made. And it just still don't work out in your favor. I mean, think of how many times, you know, like, like the, the, anytime we talk about losing, there's always the, the, the topic of dice. Too many people let dice rule them. Now. Your dice can absolutely screw you. We'll get that out of the way. That absolutely can happen. You could play a perfect game and you roll dice and your dice just shit the bed and you lose. Especially um, if you think of some games where you don't roll many dice. If you think of like, say, Hero Clicks. Hero Clicks uh, almost comes down. Now, maybe it's different now. So if you play Hero Clicks, don't tell me about it. I don't care. But Hero Clicks can come down to literally a die roll. Like you're rolling like, say, 2d6. I roll good, I win. I roll poor, you win. And, and and it's we it's not like we've rolled tons of dice along the way. We've rolled maybe a little bit, you know, or even other games. Like, you know, you could have something and you just roll poorly. But a lot of people have a big fallacy in their mind with the way they think of dice and odds and, and percentages. You're going to notice hey, the ones. Me. <laughs> Some of it is because they don't necessarily are, are good at the percentages. But other things is if you roll if you roll two dozen dice, let's say statistically, you are supposed to hit two of everything. Now, that's not going to happen. Most likely, that's not going to happen. It, we're thinking about D6s. Let's say you're rolling those. But yeah. if you happen to roll three ones, you might look at it as, oh, man, I rolled more ones than I should. Let's say you hit on twos. Oh, man, I rolled a lot of yeah. ones. 
But what you're not going to pay attention to that roll because you hit on twos is you're not going to pay attention to the three or maybe even four sixes that you might have rolled or how every other die was above. You weren't that off. Remember, um, as someone who teaches statistics, statistics do not come into play in individual roles. Never have, never will. You, you, You can try for it. You can... And you anticipate it. You can say, uh, "I'm gonna roll. I'm gonna roll twelve dice. I need sixes to do this, that, or the other thing. I should probably get about two. Yeah, that makes sense. You probably should. If you don't, though, that's not a statistical anomaly. You've only rolled twelve dice. To talk about odds, to talk about you know when you really should be able to predict things, you need large amounts. You know, you, you, yeah, you, we talk about this. The, yeah. Like you need thousands upon millions of yeah." If you flip a coin three times and it lands heads each time, that's not such an anomaly. You flip a coin 10,000 times and it was head, you know, 8,000 times. Now you have an anomaly. Now you have an unfair coin. If it happens in small batches, we, we tend to look at it and say, that skewed, say, against me. Oh, the dice are against me. Oh, it's real bad. But we don't remember it's the next roll when you rolled really well. When you had a four up and out of eight dice, you hit seven. We we don't think of that. We don't notice that. We notice the misses. We notice the problems more than the good. I'm not saying dice can't screw you, but I think for for any loss, if you want to get something out of it, you have to throw a dice out the window. Because you know what? If the dice lost you the game, maybe you did a tactic poorly. Maybe you did something bad where you rolled for something you shouldn't have. It's you not, didn't yeah. need to if you had played better. I agree. You know, I agree. I, I mean, uh, short side story, because um, if I don't talk about no, it, people that I talk to will bring it up to me because they know this drives me nuts. We were playing one time. I don't even remember what game we were playing. I want to say it was like 40K. I don't think I was even playing. I was hanging out. We were upstairs at Maplewood Hobby because there's an upstairs. This guy's up there and and two people are playing a game and, and rolling or whatever. And and he mentions, I don't remember exactly how the conversation came up. It was something about die rolls. And so and someone might have been like, oh, you know, no, I rolled real bad on that one. I rolled really good and all. I'm talking about it. And this guy, as far as I can tell, he was absolutely legitimate. And it scares me if he was legitimate, but I think he was truly legitimate. He had this idea in his mind that your die, so think about a single, single die. It has a set amount of like things that will roll in its lifetime. It has a it has a fair and equal balance of what it's going to roll. So every time it rolls you a six, it's rolled out one of its sixes. You know, he he treated it like your heart. Like your heart has a, has a number of beats that it can do. Essentially, you know, the human heart does. He treated it like when you roll a six, it is out into the ether now. And that six is gone. And you will have one less six you are able to roll. You didn't hear this before? That's but that's not how where wait what oh, the f- that's not how what? this works not how any of this works no okay so, so, so interjection i know that yeah. i make fun of myself for a role and you've seen my roles you've seen people look have used me of waiting really yes, it, yes. It, it i don't know why it i don't know maybe later on in life i always make the joke that i'm going to roll poorly but every time i roll i roll high but i never thought that the gods were blessing me or anything i'm always just joking that you know maybe it's the way i roll or flip his, the dice his okay. idea is scarier than that his concept is scarier than that. He's saying it. like you know there's a deity on my side you know the greeks used to do that stuff like okay you're you're it's crazy but so be yeah. it, you know, or luck is on my side, lady luck, call it whatever you want. You know, I played enough D D where when your dice are rolling poorly, you put them in the freezer. You know, obviously that's what you do. You teach them a Treat lesson. Them. Yeah. Teach them a His lesson. idea was I have this D six. It has a thousand sixes in it ready to go. So every time you roll a six, it has one less in there. So if you roll really well, that die now later will have to roll poorly because it has less good rolls in it. What? Yeah, and I, we talked to him, and we're like, yeah, you don't really believe this. And his conversation, like, no, he believed this. And I'm explaining to him as someone who teaches statistics, like, no, that's not how it works. Like, that's a fallacy. It's, it's the okay, same so, idea of a gambler's fallacy. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, so hold on. Wait, wait, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. yeah, take all the time so, you need. Okay, maybe, 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 no, but like, maybe scientifically, okay? Maybe scientifically no, by the nothing. dice. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Nope. Maybe the dice hitting the table no. uh rolling and hitting the six maybe the uh, like because of it hitting the table maybe some of the di- you know because dice do get worn down right so so you're maybe. you're doing in terms of mechanical 
He was yeah, talking maybe. more of in terms of like it was born this way. No, okay, no, stop it. Oh my god, yes. no, please. I can't believe you haven't heard that. <laughs> like, Every now and then people laugh. Anytime someone brings no, up no, like, I'm, I'm trying to like no, I'm trying to no, help no he was a nutcase. No, maybe he, it's okay, that simple. No, you sh- okay. You didn't mean like mechanical, like engineering, nope. engineering. Because I asked him this shit. What and I was like, well, no, I'm like that's... technically I'm like dice are not weighted well. I'm like, so that die my roll. He's like, no, he meant that's like your thinking, die yeah. is born with like rolls in it. Like, your your die is born with potential, like a child. Is he Calvinist? I don't Does know. Still exist? Is, I um is, at that point I was angry, so I left. I walked away and I went downstairs. I, <laughs> so I can't believe you haven't heard that before. Not, okay. I like I said, I make no, I've never, I swear to God, no. and it's funny because again, I make fun of Lady Luck all the time, right? I, I yeah. always make fun that Lady Luck blesses me with it. It's gotten to the point where, and you've seen this, where people will tell oh, me yeah. to roll their dice, like yeah. poor John, and I'll just roll sixes on his dice. And they'll be the stupid squig dice too, that roll like shit, but I'll just roll sixes, on them. <laughs> but I'll roll sixes on them. I don't know what it is, but like, it's maybe the way I flicked it. I don't know. Point is, right, I'll, I'll roll high and I'm always like, ah, Lady Luck's at my side again, right? It's always a joke. Yeah, but like, your joke I don't, I don't believe that. Yeah, no. I don't believe it. It's a meme. No, no, but this, like, this guy meant it. He absolutely meant it. Okay. I I, I don't know where to go from this. <laughs> so, so I, I think I think what this pulls down is when you lose, don't don't blame the dice unless it unless it truly is the dice dice fault. Like maybe maybe you played great and just your roles were real bad. We've all had that. Lot, I, that yeah, yeah. yeah, learn I've, something I've, from it. Find something else. You know. I've lost captains, my shield captains to six ones. It's happened. Yeah, it, it, it oh, absolutely yeah. has happened. If, if you are playing a game that has a random element, there's always a chance the random element will go in your favor, that it'll be fair, or that it will be against you. That's the part you can't control. So oh, there's gosh. no use fighting it. There's no use worrying about it. Honestly. You should never, after a game, if you really want to try and get good at a game, I know, and this is from two people who I wouldn't say were like amazing at any games. I play a variety of games. I've, you know, went to high levels of competition and different things and all. But like, if you really want to learn from what you do, never attribute a thing to dice. Because you can't control that. Um, I mean, okay. So speaking about bad dice, I I, I do want to mention something. Um, uh, so, so one of the bads with losing, mm-hmm. um, is, is it, it is an ego hit. So, so, okay. Let me, be, let yeah. me explain this a little bit. Yeah. So the, the ego hit's not the problem, but let me, let me flesh this out. So, so, so the bad is not the ego hit. The problem is you bought this cool army and I'm not going to mention names in Maplewood because this is a negative. So I don't want to mention, you know, negative. Uh, no, we're not going to name names shame, with negative but we, we're going to exactly, say enough exactly, where nation. if you know, you probably but know. Exactly. <laughs> so, so there's a person uh, who would literally buy armies every other month, and he would play it, lose because, and he would play it because he 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 lost against this army, right? So mm-hmm. he lost against B. He had A army. He lost against B army. So he sells A army and buys B army because there's a, a sense of awesomeness, right? Which is not inherently a problem. You could. Oh, no, that's true. Army. Yes, like, true, man, true. that army's real cool. I want that. Like, uh, that's why I picked up some Stormcast because I played against them. I lost this, them. Like, man, those guys are neat. Yeah. The, and this goes against the good of losing, you know, learn from your mistakes and, and be getting mm-hmm. better in a specific army. But, you know, he buys them, loses again. So now there's this false sense of awesome. You know, there's this, there's this, 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 this again, there's an ego hit. And this is the bad of losing that, that you might just keep shift. You might be blaming. This goes. I know you said don't blame the dice, but also don't blame the army. Sometimes, like you could blame the army for. for, You could you could blame the army sometimes, like Eldar. You don't play Eldar in forty k because dear God, Lord heaven, they're off. Well, you can play them, but play them in a fluffy, more fun environment. Don't play them at a yeah, exactly competitive, but realize that. But also don't blame the army. Like I'm not going to sit there and be like, "Wow, custodies suck. I lost this game. Uh, I'm going to start another army and buy this because custodies are the worst." I'm not going to sit there and do that because. It's not the army. It's 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 you to a point, right? Yeah. Um, and so you you have this kind of false sense of awesomeness about your army, and so if you lose, you, you kind of get this this ego hit. And I don't know. Point is, I just want to point that out there that you kind of, it's kind of hard to explain because I've 
not really done this. The way I bought armies was I just kind of wanted to buy them because they looked cool, like my Imperial Knight army. Yeah. I wanted big beefy boys, so I got it. They weren't meta, but although the irony, again, this goes back to Lady Luck, the irony was every time I bought an army, they got buffed to ridiculous points, and then people got mad at me. Like, I started yes. Paladins, Drago Wing, back in the day, and then Drago Wing became insane, and I'm like, oh, shit. Um, hmm, let me sell that for Knights. And then Knights got insane. I was like, let me, yeah. and like every time I kept doing that, the, I bought custodies in eighth edition, and then ninth edition they went nuts, and I'm like, oh fuck, god damn it. Um, but that's the point. I'm just, like, you, 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 the bad is you gotta, you get anyway, you get the point. It's harder to explain. It, it's more easier to kind of show on a person, like the example I gave with the person who kept selling the armor for buying another army. But that mm. is the bad. You get this false sense of awesome. Um, when you lose, right? You get this false sense of awesome about the other army when you lose, and then when you buy that army, you're like, wow, this army sucks. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, because you don't necessarily know how to play it. Like the, the, exactly. I mean, now, again, we're assuming reasonable bounds, reasonable fairness, and if you play GW games or if you play uh, 40K and you don't find that's true, there's plenty of other games that are much better balanced, or you might personally find better balanced. But, you know, there's something to be said that, you know, you could give a subpar player the best list out there and it doesn't mean they're going to win any games because they don't know how to pilot it they don't know how to play it they don't know the timing they don't know what makes it tick you know th there's more to more to an army than just you know your list it's also being able to pilot the list and use it uh, so yep. so I agree so let, let's talk about types of agree, losing so agree, essentially agree. where where losses come from it's obvious that you know they come from the problems you do they come from the mistakes that you make you make a bad decision, so you lose the game. Or you make a lot of bad decisions, <laughs> and then you just slowly watch your dreams crumble around you. Yeah. But okay. I okay. Good. Yeah. So okay. Yeah. No. No. Okay. So this is okay. This only happened to me once, and I, I I'm not shamed about it. I've actually looked back and I kick myself about it all the time. But Maybe you should be okay. ashamed. One type of losing is is no. no, 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 no. So one type of losing is. The losing before you begin a oh, game. Yeah. Right. Let me, I'm going to explain this from a personal point of view. I went to a tournament with one of my friends, Luke, and it was down by the one near Rutgers that I always forget the name of. Um, I know it's not by it's Rutgers, not really but it's close enough down uh, south ish. I don't that know. It's, it's near Cross the Cuban Restaurant. I know, I know, but it's. Oh, it's driving up the wall. Point is, not I was a there, body. We're playing a game, and I not actually body. faced yeah. against Nick Nedevante. Now, for those who don't know, in 40K, Nick Nadevante, Nadevati, sorry, he is the 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 the, the golden boy. He is he is a he's, he's up there on he's the, probably the top three guys. At, are, at any particular day, the yeah, best player that there is. He's, yes. Yeah. Uh, next to Sean. And next to, Sean, to but other people. Absolutely. The he's, top he's three. He's won, always in the top three. Um, um, what is that? He 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 yeah. he's so won. Uh, I, what you call it before? Um, the. Uh, Oh, the big one the that happens in Vegas. Didn't he win the one in Vegas? Yeah, he. Uh, but but he also won he the won year, one. like the, the year thing of it. Oh, the Las Vegas Open. Yeah. So he yeah, like I mean, won there, but also right. he won for the year. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I didn't. Oh, jeez. Okay, yeah. No. So he's so I played against him. Now, I lost that game i made a stupid mistake and i can recall that mistake i played a bike army of custodies and instead of pressuring one corner of the board which would have absolutely won me the game like this is again this was one of the things where i knew my mistake i learned from my mistake um i i took some of my bikes broke them in half broke the army in half and and attacked them on the side of the board which is almost unmanned by his army so i split my force in half which allowed him to kind of manipulate my army and and eventually mm. win on objectives right had I not done that and just f force pushed one side of the army and destroyed that side, it would have been over. But I chased the rabbit. Is what I like said. I chased the white rabbit. Now you might be saying, "Okay, that's how is this a loss before you begin?" This was a loss before I begin because in my head I was playing against Nick. Yeah. And to me, I was like so hyper focused and so scared against playing him because here I am, not a tournament player, and I'm playing against one of the. the, the of tournaments. This is, this is like <laughs> playing God's God himself, yeah. essentially, in 40k. Um, so I'm feeling already like, oh my God, I'm going to lose this game. How bad am I going to lose? I'm not thinking, why am I taking like this? Again, I kick myself. This is again, you learn from this mistake. I've never done this again. Uh, so I took, so Dave, I mm -hmm. had 15 bikes. Okay. 
right? Three units of five bikes. 15 bikes against a corner, any corner of his army would have decimated it. I took five of those bikes and chased, and I shit you not, one tank with like five dudes in it. I, uh, why? Um, to m- really yeah. stupid that. And by the time I figured this out, I couldn't jet back to, 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 to help the other 10. He was able to target yeah. the other 10. Um, and again, that I stood that there was spicy. That was a spicy loss. But again, that loss didn't happen because of that. That loss happened because I, in my head, right before the game started, I was playing against Nick and in my head, I'm like, Oh my God, what do I do? So do I, do I yeah. say hi? Like, I'm almost playing against the star. I was a little you're shy too, the you know what I mean? Star. So it's like, it was uh, a loss uh, yeah, before there's I definitely began. You can lose yeah. because, you know, you psych yourself yeah. out and, or up or something like that, which that's essentially what that is. You know, um, I, uh, uh, no, 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 go ahead. Finish that. Cause then I'll talk about other ways that you lose before yeah. you even start. I, and that's, that's one of my, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, because that was that. No, that was gonna be like it sounds. It sounds stupid, but like that's my only one, and I've I, uh, and it'll always be in my soul. Like that's something yes, I'll always remember. Until you it's beat so him weird that that's like no, it's not. That's, that's, that's so weird that that's what it is. I'm sure he's totally. Like, yes, if, if he does reach, reach out, he say listens something. to this podcast and he's like, it, but, "The fuck is this?" Um, <laughs> but no, I'm sure he would. Oh my god, yeah, he can come on and. Have, oh my god, you, that would be. I would be. I would still seen, be shit. Um, Are you kidding me? I'd still shoot a uh, Street because, Fighter yeah, movie. You. The old one with Jean Claude Van Damme playing I'll the American, playing Guile. Brick. Have you seen that movie? Okay, so so first of all, you need to see it because it is un- unfortunately Rob Julia's last um last movie he did before no no you know, no, he, no no he succumbed no, to his, his stomach cancer that he had. He only did the movie because his children were huge Street Fighter fans, so he he decided to do it for them. But um, in there, you know. Oh really? Chun okay. is, is is talking to him about how you know you came yeah. to my village, you killed my 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 dad, all this kind of stuff. He did all this terrible stuff, and and he has a very simple oh, line. Okay. And he goes to you, you know, the day that M Bison graced your village was the most important day in your entire life. But to me, it was a Tuesday. I I to me to me I feel like like that's what would happen if like you talk to Nick, he'd be like, yeah, I don't I don't remember that game. Like you remember it because of what happened. He's probably played so many games Oof. versus so many people. Oof. Oof. I, 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 would, I, I would love be, that. I would be curious if he actually remembered that game. You're going to remember it because of what happened, you know? Oh, even si- even the funnier side. Oh, yeah. Even funnier side note, it's I, it's so ingrained in my memory. Now, if you laugh, it's fine. And people I will. listen to the podcast laugh. It. It's so ingrained in my memory. Are you ready for this? It's so ingrained in my memory that I don't know if you know like Custody's bikes. You know how they have the, like this, the fins on the bottom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that little. Uh, I uh, I broke two of the fins on my Custody's bikes, and I was so upset about that because I was using milk crates to carry around the army, and I had I remember I had to go on eBay literally during that day right before I left. Ooh. In that okay, store, yeah. I went on eBay and I ordered those bike bits for eight ninety nine on eBay. It was those bike bits from a bike bit store? I'll always remember. Like that's how ingrained that day is for me. That's how ridiculous. In like it's so weird to think about this. That some like, you would think the birth of my fucking child would be this. Bit. But <laughs> no, but that also no, has of course. Not, but my wife listens to this. That the, we but, remember. So I still remember breaking those not stupid, things. Though. You we know what remember I mean? the it problems, and oh we God, remember the things so that loud. surround them a lot more than the good times. We obviously remember the really big good times, but like those small, like I said, micro memories. Because you know, like I said, you're gonna remember it. He probably doesn't. People around you probably don't. The only reason you remember it is because when you think about it, you say, "I made this was the mistake I made, and I see why I made it, and I feel like I should have won." You know, <laughs> um, I don't. I have I have games that I think about like I'm like oh, I yeah. lost that but I don't I don't have anything like that I I have absolutely just, in tournaments and, and, gotten yeah. gotten nerves and stuff like that but it's usually it's usually not worked out against me usually when I get nervous at a tournament I actually do very well um the times I win tournaments is usually when I'm like oh I don't know about this and then it just it works out but I, I haven't played in competitive uh some competitive tournaments in a while I've done some of them like online but not in person um but for more about um losing before you even begin part of that's list building now let's let's not get it twisted some of it could be the army you choose if you choose the worst army in the faction and um not this time obviously but one of these other days they keep putting out the state of the sigmar 
stuff where they go through it. I want us to go through that a bit to talk about it. Like, it, yeah, if you split, if you pick Gloom Spike, gets now they are supposed to be one of the ones getting an update in the new year. It's all rumors, but they're it's, supposed to be one of the soon ones, and they're supposed to get in a box. Like it's, oh lord. But yeah, if you play those, you know, unfortunately, you're gonna win. You're probably gonna lose more than you win just off of that choice. But your list matters. You know, your turn zero. Um, in X Wing, it, you know, it's a big thought we talk about is this idea of turn zero. You know, in X Wing, it's about you know deployment. It's about where you put your obstacles, all of those sorts of things. Um, but in other games, it's the same idea: deployments. You know, before you actually even start the game, it, you know, there there's ways to set yourself up for difficulty or potentially set yourself up for failure. If you are playing versus someone who's equal skill or maybe even someone who's better. If you make a mistake before you even begin, if there's a problem in your list, if there's a problem with the way you put things down, any of that, they're going to capitalize on it. You know, um, yeah. Uh, other other problems say like missed opportunities. You you miss things. You just don't do what you're supposed to. Especially like I said when we talk about 40k, Sigmar a bit. I mean, Sigmar doesn't have stratagems the same sort of way, but they do have like command yeah, point sort of stuff. I agree. No, yes. Uh, yeah. Oh, but you no, and you also miss opportunities. Like sometimes you, you should have charged one area instead of another. Um, although I will point out, look, so so this this I've ne I, I've maybe run into two people in a tournament that's that's mm -hmm. done this. Um, but when you say missed opportunities, what I also think of is, and this this Goonhammer did an excellent armor on, uh, uh, article on this yeah, on the idea of intent in tournaments, yes. right? Uh, yes, yeah. I was, did you read that one? Oh, yes. yes. So missed opportunities can also be like, oh shit, I forgot to do this. Do you mind just backtracking and and doing this? And then the opponent says, no. At a tournament, listen, it sucks. It feels yeah. bad, but play, play, always play with a intent. tournament for money. It you missed it. That's that's your error. Now, yes. Oh it, yes. Always play with intent. And I and so I've only really run into two people that's done this, and it's never miss, It's never like a massive thing. It'll always be like a small mistake, like, oh, I forgot to cast this one psychic power. Oh, that's actually major, never mind. I forgot to, you know, move oh, I forgot to move this 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 squad in the movement phase. Do you mind just moving them? It's not gonna do anything. It's just gonna put them back on the objective. I meant to do this. That yeah. that and it's obviously not gonna affect anything in the game except putting them back on the objective. And they had the movement to do it, you just literally forgot it. That's what I mean by intent. And if the person doesn't let you do it, it sucks. They're kind of a dick. But you know what? That's that's how a tournament yeah. works. Um, but that is a missed opportunity right there. You yeah. gotta, you can't be hyper focused at 100 percent all the time. It sucks, but like if you do, if the opponent doesn't let you do a little take back, that is a missed opportunity. Technically, that is it a missed is, opportunity. And there's ones that you don't even necessarily realize until much later. I've played plenty of games, especially with newer armies, where I realize later I'm like, I didn't use this rule. They have a rule that just didn't even dawn on me to use it. Oh yeah. Um, that's why for Sigmar, I forget the name of oh. it. But there's oh, like there, no. there's a, a page or an app that you can use, and you put in what you have, and it will do reminders. You'll tell them, oh yeah, I'm in the hero phase. Yes, It'll tell you yes. what what you should yes. remember. Here's some special things you can do. Oh, charge phase. Yeah, when your guys do this, remember that. Here's a rule they have. Make you know, roll for this thing that they do. You know, your opponent could take backs are always tough to me uh, as a person, and I'm I'm not. I don't think any miniature war game should be played at such a competitive level where like you don't care about the other person. I mean, we're, you're playing a game for fun. No, even there, even there. Well, I, I don't play because I don't find it fun. But <laughs> any game you play, we are playing these games for fun. No one is making their living doing this. Even magic, some people do. But, you know, like no one, no one's making a living making 40K. Same, sorry, playing 40K. No one's making a living playing X-Wing, any of this stuff. So you know what? At the end of the day, it really doesn't matter. You know, what happens doesn't truly, truly matter. So I am a big proponent of the idea that even in a tournament, you know, your enjoyment as my opponent is part of my responsibility. Now, it, it, yeah, if you're just going to be really unhappy, if you're going to be exactly. you know, an asshole no, about agree, it, that's another exactly. thing entirely. But like, if we're still, if we've just about to leave the movement phase, like, oh, we're going to psychic phase. And you're like, oh, I forgot to move this unit. Can I move them? If you say no, like, it's not making a difference in the game, you know. It, it, it's yeah and you're playing the rules correctly but still it's just you being yeah exactly i know it's it's it, and it happens but again that's that's an opponent thing yes that, that's that's well, no it, it is a you it, thing because you did miss it. now i did you did, you did mention you did miss what oh. you should have done 
But yes, in yes, the you spirit did. of sportsmanship, True. if it's not going to change the current state of the game, not will it change whether you win or not, if it doesn't change the current state of the game in a way yeah. that would have to backtrack a lot of things, say do it. Now, if they say, oh, I forgot to move that, and now you're in charge phase, no, too late. Yeah. You're charged. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, that's, that's exactly. Like, yeah, no, yeah. you can make up on here. <laughs> No, so you mentioned something about like forgetting rules, especially like if you're yes. a new player on the army. Okay, Absolutely. this is an embarrassing story time. Uh, hey, Dave, how many wounds does two custodians have? Do you know? I've, and and uh, if you do, I'm going to be embarrassed. Let me see. Don't cheat. I'm going to go with three. You fucking asshole. God damn. Is it three? So, yeah, it is. Okay, so. Okay. Um, well, yeah, Terminator so gets two. I, these guys are bigger. Yeah. Three. That makes so, sense. So, uh, yeah, that's normal custodies. Uh, when I played custodies in eighth edition, and this was like four games in already. All right. This was four games in. Oh, God. Were you playing, uh, with playing like six wounds or something? Two wounds. Oh, okay. well, here, at least you were doing it in your opponent's favor rather than yes, kind of yes, like cheating true. your opponent. But the amount of embarrassment um, that 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 had. Uh, uh, basically, I remember it only because now whenever like new custodies rules come out, I, I literally like at overanalyze them and make sure I memorize the hell out of them. Yeah, <laughs> but no, it was it was embarrassing because it was like, oh, there are two wounds, right? And everyone's looking at me like. N-. And to be fair, I did play custodians in thirty k. That's why in thirty k there are two wounds, okay. um, which is still big because almost everything in thirty k is one wound. Like yeah. having a two wound character or having a three wound character. Oh my god! And then four wounds are basically you're you're basically next to prime arcs. Yeah, yeah. These custodians have two wounds. You know, the terminators have three. You, and, at least you then, had a reason. Yeah. Yes, yeah, you exactly. Had a good reason, to but, it, but that just letting the little side note that was one of the big things um, that lost me the first four games. I mean, I still lost more games than that, but that was a big reason because they'd hit me with like two damage, and I'd be like, "Oh, well, that's a dead custodian," and it's not. It's 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 a big difference between having a dead custodian and then a custodian on one wound. Yeah. Um, yeah, no. So, so yeah, no. That was that was really funny. I lo- <laughs> and it wasn't even like a bad mistake for the opponent. It was a bad mistake on me. So, I'll always, and that's always a self laugh on my part. Is that, at least you made um, an yeah. error in your benefit because this goes into the to the last main type of 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 issue that I find is an opponent error. And I, we're we're not going to go yeah. into the the part of someone's cheating you on purpose. I mean, they could, and nothing you can do about that. Yes, but luckily, yeah. people miss rules. People get rules wrong. You know, a lot of these games don't write the rules. You know, oh, yeah. Depending on the company, some don't write the rules very well. I've read many, many books, unfortunately, most of them from the British, where the rules books, yeah, they are very loose um, to say at best with the way that they're written. You know, e- Bro, the, 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 the previews for custodies, the preview for custodies. Yeah. People already, um, oh, no, oh, no, wait, 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 wait. Um, I don't know if you knew this. So in the preview for custodies, they had the relic uh, spear, right? Yes, I saw um, that. I think- they fixed it. Did you see what the original mistake was, or did they fix no, it? No, no, no. I didn't. I so didn't catch original, it until today. So, okay, so the original, the, they they showed the relic spear, and people were freaking out because on the relic spear, I'll pull it up real quick. It had you know twenty four inch range, rapid fire one, strength four, AP minus two, two damage, right? And people were like, okay, that's real cool. Um, and then under melee, it said strength two, not strength plus two, strength two. And people were like, uh... I'll get you with a strong hand. Is the custodies hitting like a grot? <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> What's going on? And then they corrected it a plus two. But that happens. Yeah. That that happens. The rules are... I mean, for Christ's sake, the, the rules of the kata are already, like, convoluted as it is. Without kind of, like, going crazy. But yeah, no, I agree completely. Anyway, sorry, continue. I cut you off. <laughs> no, no, no. No, that's fine. No, I'm... I'm... You know, some of these games in general, you know, miniature war games can be rather complicated. Depends on the game. Some are a little bit, some are a little bit simpler or a little bit more straightforward or clear than others. Some of them are very, very complex, or the rules interactions are complex. Or again, take take forty k or Age of Sigmar as the example. Just the amount of armies and the things that those armies can do, and the special rules that maybe your army has, and the special rules your model has, and your army wide rules, and all of that. It's easy to misinterpret that. It's easy to to miss something, you know. Yeah, a, assuming no saying. one's doing anything, you know, untoward, you know, it it, it can be easy to, to to make to make a mistake, not realize like, oh, 
yeah, no, I wasn't, I wasn't supposed to be able to do this thing because of this condition. You know, oh, I forgot that yeah, I, I have this negative. Uh, I've seen that when I've played um, A Song of Ice and Fire, you know, for certain things. I, you know, there, you know, if I'm playing against an army I don't know well, I won't remember, you know, I, I could forget they have Sundering. If my opponent doesn't tell me to have Sundering, so I get minus one of my save, if I don't know your thing does that, I'm not going to roll for it. I'm just going to roll because I'm not aware that it has that rule. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know? Or maybe you think it has Sundering. Because maybe it used to, and you tell me it does, and I'm like, okay, yeah, you know your rules, cool. I'm rolling at this. I, yeah, it turns out you didn't, you know, and maybe it's too late to go back. So, you know, that that's probably the least. It can sometimes feel like the most feel bad, but in reality, that should be the least feel bad of these situations because that one was yeah, entirely it, it, out of yeah. your control. Go ahead. Yeah, it literally. No, no, no. I'm agree. No, I'm just agreeing. It, it, it's. You cannot feel bad about that. I mean, you could, obviously, and I'm not going to tell you what to feel, but it, it, it is the you most shouldn't. out of your control. Yeah. Yeah. The big thing is that you shouldn't feel bad about that because you, yeah, if something happened, it was 100% outside of your control. Same thing with dice. If your dice go bad on you, um, you, you shouldn't, you know, you, one, like I said, don't blame the dice, but two, don't feel bad about it because you can't do anything about that. I just want poor. Yeah, okay, exactly. they want poor. So like listen and i know you mentioned the rolling ones so custodians hit on mm -hmm. twos right and you see me do this all the time and you we call me out on playing it all some the other time. stuff that isn't just custodians oh, fuck you fuck you <laughs> no no i play i play ogres too um but even oh we no even when i buff the ogres to hit on twos i'll roll and you see me do this and i love when you call me yep. out on this it's so funny you see Everyone me roll know. let's say yeah. 18 dice and they hit on twos right and I'll roll three ones, and you'll look at me, and I'll literally say, God damn it, three ones, that's so much. And you're looking at me like, Dan, that's literally statistically average. I Like, what? I'm like, no, three ones should never have happened. They should have all hit. And so it's really funny because, yeah, it's, it's bad. Or, you know, to me, that looks like bad dice, but it's just normal dice. But anyway, yeah, so yeah. it's just, that always makes me laugh. Um, I mean, so, like, yeah. That's all the types. Uh, that, that's all the types I could think of, right? Yeah, I think those. I think those are the main types. That covers uh, at least yeah. all the the big sort of cases. So th then, what it comes down to is, all right. So you know, lo losing is is to an extent an issue. It's a learning experience, but it's an issue. So the question is, well, how do you stop losing so much? Obviously, outside of you know, get a better army, play something different. You like know, scrub. <laughs> let, let yeah, let's assume that whatever you have is what you have, and that's what you're going to play. So how can we attempt to? Hopefully, okay. hopefully get good, as they say. Yes, get good, scrub. Um, no, uh, th th I mean this is gonna everyone roll their eyes. Cue right now. Uh, practice. Um, yeah. No, it's just it's just practice. Seriously, okay. it, uh, I I played so many freaking games like black back when I played Grey Knights. Right, sure, paladins were really overpowered, but I practiced and practiced before they became overpowered. So when they actually became overpowered, I was really dominating the table. You know, uh, custodians. I played eighth edition, and I just practiced with them constantly, losing constantly. So by the time they actually got good, or they fixed the mistakes that I thought they would mistake, they would they did. Um, I was able to win. You know, um, if you just you just practice that it. it you learn that army. I can, I mean, listen, I'll put it this way. I don't know every stratagem in the book, Dave. Are you kidding me? I don't know all 20 stratagems or 25 or 30 stratagems. I'm honestly surprised by that. I figured by now yeah, you no, would. they have a lot. No, no, I don't put, here, let me rephrase that. I'm uh, sorry, let me rephrase that. Uh, I don't know every name. I don't know every name. But I can tell you right now that there's a 1CP stratagem that allows me to deny a psychic power to 4-up. What that stratagem name is, I have no fucking idea. And if an opponent calls me on it, I'll have to figure out the name in my electronic codex. But I can tell you right now that I have a 1CP to deny a psychic power to 4 up. I have no idea what the name is. I just know that I use it when I need it. And it's only against a psychic army. You know what I mean? And the yeah. only reason I know that is because it, it, I've practiced it, you know? I have no idea what the name is. I just know when to use it. I boom, pull it out. Um, I know for a fact that um, I have a one CP stratagem to heroic intervene any one of my units. I, st I have no idea what it's called. Zero mm -hmm. idea. But I know that if I'm playing you, Dave, mm -hmm. and you get you charge one of my units, I'm going to look at you, and this is, you talk about this spirit of sportsmanship. I'm going to look at you, hey, Dave, listen, I'm going to let you know right now, I have a one CP stratagem that, see these units that are surrounding the, the unit you just charged? 
don't get with I'm telling you right now, if you get within three inches, I can spend one CP and I could counter charge you. Right? I could I could heroically intervene. I don't know what the name of that strategy is. And if again, if you call me on that, I'll have to look it up, but I know it's one CP and I can do it. That comes with practice. That's that comes the fact that I don't need to look at my codex for every single rule. Right. Or the fact that I know yeah. that my, my Sagittarian can shoot at 15 inches and 36 inches respectively, that comes with practice. And yeah. it, it, that's how you get good. Yeah. You, I mean, you got to play the game. If you, if you want to get to know a game, you got to play it. And ideally, you want to play it with good people. And that, that means one, people that you enjoy. I mean, you don't want to hopefully don't have to, don't play or have to play with people you don't enjoy playing with. But ideally, you want to play with people who are better than you. You, you know, it's that idea of you know never be the smartest person in the room, never be the best player in the room. Because if you're the best player in the room, you're not going to learn no. anything. Pretty much it. Yeah. You know. I mean, you made fun of me playing what Guild Wars recently, right? Hold on. I, I, that? Yeah, yeah, I said it get the, get when we were starting off. today. Yeah. So even in even not even has and to was do late with because of Guild Wars. Gaming. I was Guild Wars too, but no, not even has to do with miniature gaming, Dave. Not even that. I was commanding yeah. about an hour ago in World versus World. I was uh, commanding fifty people, right, in a in a huge PvP match. I've been commanding since Guild Wars came out. That what two thousand twelve. So how many okay. years is yeah, that? I didn't know. I did Damn near know. ten years. Damn near yeah. ten years. I've been commanding. When I first started commanding, I. <laughs> <laughs> it was bad. It was really bad. Now everyone was bad as well because it was a new game, but everyone was bad. But now I'm able to to to. Uh, I'm gonna. I, I, it's hard to not use the the lingo, but I'm able to train, not, not t uh, like train choo choo train. I'm able to train the line, and be able to like run right through blobs and just drop you know bomb after. Uh, Basically, I'm able to do the tactics to defeat other people very easily, and I'm able yeah. to call people you out. You can play and do the it. game very that well. Took years of practice. I can't. I couldn't do it. Yes, it, and that's not even a miniature game. So, it, it practice. It's it's life lesson. How about that? So, as yeah. it's, as everyone rolled their eyes, let's get to actual. You know how to get good at a game besides practice. <laughs> yeah. So, it's, what do you so, think? So it's practice. Like it's, it's a practice and playing <laughs> with people who are good. The other thing is is you know, I. I in my mind, the least amount of time you spend in the hobby is actually playing the game for most people. You know, that's not, I'm not, you know, counting, you know, the hobbying aspects, building, painting, all that kind of stuff, but even just the theory crafting, making lists, thinking about the game, not even necessarily yeah. it, putting something together, but thinking through games, thinking through. I, I find myself doing it a variety of times of thinking, like, okay, this is the arm I have. When I face certain things, what are the things I do? What are the things I'm looking to do? What is I'm hoping to do? You know, I, I know, I know, I think you've done this. You've played games versus yourself, right? Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. yes. Oh, I mean, people make fun of me for that, but I, okay, so this is 30K. I'll play 30K against myself. And one of the big things custodians have a problem with in 30K is uh, shooting armies. Where I mean, I also don't use transports. So I, that's also a me thing because I hate the way they look and I should buy them, but I don't want to. So how do mm -hmm. I beat an army without using transports? So I'll play against my Mechanicum, which will just decimate absolutely decimate my custodians at long range so i've learned tips and tricks like okay someone's taking this maybe deep strike two units here that force them and, and as i'm running the units know when to run the units up before they could charge so mm. so i played against myself it's like playing chess against yourself and like it's hard to get away from biases when you play against yourself but it's good practice it's 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 and it's good theory crafting you know what I mean? I mean, yeah. to, to be, I, how much time I spend on stupid battle scribe making the doubt hall a second. Let me just, hold on. I think you mentioned last time the number of lists yet. While you look that up, yeah. um, I'll, yeah. I'll mention a few things. Um, to me, I, I don't sit, I'm mean, even when I play a board game, if it's just me, I play a lot of solo games. I rarely do them on the table. I'll play them on my computer because I'm not going to go through the effort of, of putting out all these models to do that. But I will absolutely theory craft a game on my mind. I'll go through and say, you know, hey, in this sort of scenario, what would I do first? These sorts of things I do. Here's what I'm hoping my opponent does or doesn't do. You know, I, I can't foretell what that person is going to do, but I can know, I can think through what is a good decision for them, what is a bad decision, what is a neutral decision. Um, if if I can better predict, one, I want to give you more choice. The more choices I give you, the better chance that you are going to make a mistake. But if I have some idea of if I make these moves, here are, the, here are the potential responses and here's, you know, the good to bad of them. If I see you make the bad response, then I have an idea of what I can do about that. I have maybe concepts of how to, um, how to capitalize on it. 
So though I may yeah. not break out my models, I will absolutely think my way through, say, a turn one of a game or or the theory of, of, of what do I do in these different circumstances. Absolutely. Absolutely. So opening the battle scribe, Dave, I'm going to pose a question. How many custodies okay. lists do you think I own? Ooh. You know what? I'll, leave, I'll make it funnier. I want to make it funnier. How many 40K, 30K, or 40K custodies lists do you think I have in my battle scribe? Hmm. Now I'll, get, I'll help you out. I'll hint you. I've only played maybe four of them. Okay. Okay. If you've played four of them, I am, I'm going to guess a ratio and my ratio is, mm, I'm, I'm going to go with, and, and, and now custodians, I know have very few models. So theoretically you have very few options. They play a few models, but they actually have a, no, they, they, they play with few models, but they actually have a lot of choice. They do have a lot of selection. Okay. I'm, I, should, I'm I should point to, that out. I'm going to guess my low end guess. My low end guess is 15 to one. Which means, since you played four lists, my guess would be fifteen times that. My guess is sixty lists. Okay, maybe that was too much then. No, I have around uh, forty-five. I have forty-five, forty-six. Okay, that, that's, that's not, that's not that far off. No, that's only for and, you. That's, and, and, that's like and another two to three days for you. You'll get there. Yeah. No, it's 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 and it's literally like I I <clears throat> just I'm not even going to read it. But, Tournament list one, or actually, sorry, tournament custodies, tournament custodies, tournament custodies, tournament. And you might be saying, but they're all the same name. Nope. Tournament custodies, triple telemon. Tri uh, tournament custodies, triple telemon with dreadnoughts. Tournament custodies, triple telemon with shield custodies. Tournament custodies, triple telemon with venetari. Uh, you know these names well. I don't always. I'm sometimes like the <laughs> first list, list after wait, wait, that wait, list. Wait, wait, wait. Like terrible names. <laughs> tournament custodies, thick boy special number nine. <laughs> did, you, did you say thick boy special number nine? I mean, like, I know, I know, we have an explicit rating, but that might be above. It's a, it's twenty terminators, and the point of this list is that you play two, you deep strike ten terminators down on the field, right? Oh no, sorry, you don't. You, you, you have ten terminators on the field, right? You run them up six, and then run the, run them six, and then move them six. They move twelve up the board, right? Mm -hmm. On turn two, you deep strike another ten terminators, and then the first ten terminators you have, you play a two CP stratagem. All those ten terminators, uh, unless anyone died, but that entire group of terminators that stayed on the board, now is an individual unit. They can go over the hell they want. They're all individual heroes. <laughs> and then turn three, that other unit of ten terminators that deep strike, you play the same two CP stratagem. Now there, I have ten plus terminators running around the field, capping objectives, all individual. That is that one of the ones you've played or no? Have you not brought that uh, pain upon someone? I've I've won. It's not painful. I probably would lose horrendously. But the okay. idea of twenty terminators all being heroes on the board acting individually well, is. Let's keep in mind, you know, you can win against someone, oh, yeah. and the game can still be painful. You know, like, I'm not saying yeah. pain because you're going to crush them. I'm just saying, like, wait, you're doing what now? Each of those each of those models is going to activate separately? All right. Tell me when I can come back because I'm going to leave now for a while. Oh, yeah. Well, it is. well, thankfully, it's only 20 models, which ironically is still less than the amount of units some people think. That's true. Yeah. No, that's very that's true. So very um, true. It is, it's, the whole point of the list was you cannot kill them. Yeah, I will be on objectives forever and ever. And let's say you outnumber me by one model. All right, I'm just going to move a model over there. Not the whole unit. Nope, just the model so I can outnumber you. I don't need a lot. It's a stupid list. It should never be done. But I have, or my favorite list, and I haven't played this one yet. This one, this one I wouldn't do to someone. So the point of this list is, is not to get, okay, is to deny the opponent. This is for, um, I came up with this with my friend Luke. So if we ever play on a team together, right? Like, you know, we're a five-man team and then we're faced off against another five-man team and we pick, you know, who to fight. This My list is literally paired up against someone who I'm denying points for. It yeah. is 30 shield It is thirty shield custodies. It's an entire army of one plus armor save, three plus invulnerable custodies. They do no damage, barely, or barely any damage, and it's just they sit on objectives the entire... They deny you all of your points. And if I win, I win. If I don't, you still don't get enough points. Mm -hmm. You only get 30 points out of 100. And I may get zero, but you still only get 30. Yeah. Now will I ever play that list? Never. But is it in there? Hell yeah. <laughs> That's good that you won't. Yeah, no, it's painful. I would never do that. I would only do that on the worst of my enemies.
But that's theory crafting, you know what I mean? Yeah. 45 lists, and I've only played four of them. But there are funny as hell lists in there that I look at and I just giggle because it's so stupid. You know? And I think about, hey, maybe this actually does work, you know? Um, but yeah, no. All right, so uh, I, 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 uh, that covers theory for sure. The last, the last big thing I think I have, <laughs> and, and I know people who, when they get into games, they've done this, and I do this to an extent. Is is you know, if, if you want to learn a game, watch good people play a game, and that can be in person. There's tons of ways to watch it online. There's tons of Twitch channels, YouTube channels. I I know a guy yeah. who to start up Marvel. He's like, yeah, the game looked cool, so I just watched tons of people play. And I learned the game that way because you can learn a lot that way, especially if you want to learn an army or you want to be able to play better. Watch people who, you know, play very well. Watch people who play your army. There's enough medium out there where wherever you want to see, you can um, you can you can find it. You know, yeah, I agree. Yeah, I agree. Well, I mean, I, I, I was gonna say I, 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 I part of the can hammer discord can hammer discord is literally the, the custodies discord this guy yeah we all play custodies we all love custodies and we all talk about custodies um and i mean there's other discord channels on this like you know what is it uh imperium dark angel space marine xenos but the most popular one is the custodies collective because yeah. we all like and the main person here plays you know custodies um and we most of the arguments I've had today that we talked about when we talked about katas and stuff or katas, sorry, kata, damn it, kata, <laughs> damn it, um, I hate that kata um, came from our. I mean, God, okay, the last conversation was uh, eleven twenty four, and there's been oh yeah, that's funny. It actually does tell me. I can't even scroll to the fucking top without it actually slowing down and load. I posted, point is, I posted the, I was the first one to post the Warhammer Community article at around, what, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock? All There's right. been roughly a thousand posts? Is that, yeah, wow. about a thousand. I mean, some pictures every now and then, but about a thousand posts. I, I would stop looking at the phone, teach class, come back while I was in two minutes walking to the next class, and there'd be about 200 unread messages or 200 uh, new posts because we were just constantly like, you know, about, oh my God, what does this mean? Well, what does this mean? And that's where we figured out, oh my God, the spear says strength two, not plus two. Mm. Is, am I hitting the strength of a god or like what the hell's going on? And actually, they emailed GW immediately and GW fixed it. And that's where the GW actually fixed it. So you make a very good point. Just watch people or or not just watch people but also like talk to people who True. play that yeah. art get, get involved you know what i mean get involved in that like, that community on, yeah get on facebook i'm part of the facebook group ogre thick boy special and That's the, the name entire of the group? facebook group oh my god it is it is so good um hey listen okay you play ogres you don't, you don't play ogres to look sexy okay Dave? i, I play, assume uh, boy is spelled b-o-i <laughs> of course it is of course, it's the Ogre Thick Boy Special Number Five. No, um, no, and it's but to be serious, these are some really. They're actually on, um, on, not to spout off all the names, but there are some tournament winning ogre players in this Facebook group. And I mean, sadly, I don't have any of the armies they play. Well, I do. I just don't want to play them. It's mostly stone horns and big boy monsters that I don't want to play. But then you know, they, they discuss you. Know, wow, I've I've played. What's this guy played twenty five games in like a week. With the stone horn, and that's that's a big metric right there. You know what I mean? Twenty five yeah. games in a week is is insane, but that's what they do. They 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 play test, they play test, they play, they and they tell you, okay, you know what? This is what this guy is good for. And so, and he's not going to be the ultimate authority, but he's got enough evidence to help me out. You know? Um, and so, just look on Facebook, YouTube, uh, Discord is good. You know what I mean? Just find people, and there's so much, especially for forty k. Please. Never, never say that. <laughs> yeah, the the know. other thing I will say, because now I've learned this, do not try to search that group if you think you're going to spell it wrong, because my internet is now ruined. Oh, because my internet's like thick boy special. All right, let's let's help you out with that. Like no, <laughs> nope, it's oh, all bad now. <laughs> oh, that's always a cool thing. I had one of my kids. I had one of my kids. I had one of my kids. We we're doing an Egyptian uh, project on the Egyptian gods, and a kid comes to me and goes, "Why does Thanos have the ability to snap and uh, re kill half of the the, the universe?" And I go, "What the hell, Thanos? What the?" Okay. And I look at her computer, and she's like Thanos on Marvel, and I'm like, I have to give her. She did, but she's not. A, she's a she's not new to the country, but she's not a geek. She hasn't. She's never watched a Marvel movie in her life. Yeah. So I'm looking at her like, "Do you understand who this is?" And she goes, 
it's it's Thanos, the Egyptian god. And I'm like, oh, honey, no, 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 no. So yeah, just always be careful with what you're searching. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's that, that, my uh, my my internet will be funny for a while, I bet. But that's okay. <laughs> um, I I think that covers all the main things that I had. Um, hopefully, oh, hopefully that. we had some yeah. some good uh some good ideas for people. I mean, listen. Overall, I I, I just. I mean, yeah, obviously practice. I'm not going to have people roll their eyes, but honestly, just this sounds stupid, but just and this that person who kept switching the armies, just play the game with your army and it's okay to lose with that army. If you lose 16 times, I mean, for Christ's sake, my friend, I mentioned him before, John, how many times has John lost with the Zelda army? I don't think he's won once. I almost want to text him. I don't think he's won once in ninth edition. I I don't know. I don't. I got a text. I, we, I know. I know. We had this conversation last week. I, I, he's literally shelved the Zeldar. He's won. I think zero games in eighth and ninth edition, or at least in ninth edition. I know for sure. And his and that's like and seventeen games. Than that. Oh yeah, it's it's and he just he shelled him at that point. But to be fair, he still lost seventeen times, and he's tried every single Eldar unit. Like he's he's he's, but like you know what I mean. Like it's it's it's. It sucks to lose, but you just keep playing with the army. And I bet you anything, when the Elder Codex comes out, he's going to be a boss with that army because he's played it to the point where he understands what each unit does. Yeah. But yeah, that's just my kind of final thought on the matter. Yeah, I, I, I think it sums up well. It's just, you know, play what you want, have fun, try not to worry about it too much. But if you want to get better, you know, th- there's ways to do that. And getting involved and getting through it is the, is the best way to do that. But all yeah, right, we've run a, we've run our, ourselves a little bit long, so I think we'll uh, we'll we'll close it out here. So I do want to thank, uh, yeah. Oh, we That's had a little much. technical difficulty in the middle, and you were late because you were playing Guild Wars. Very true. So, very true. That's a straight lie. No proof. That was not a lie. <laughs> You're right because it was Guild Wars two. I should have said Guild Wars probably isn't a thing anymore. Don't correct me yeah, if I'm it wrong. It is. No, no, it's still very. Popular. Of course it is. <laughs> um. So I do want to thank uh, anyone and everyone for listening. Um, the, the, the downloads, the likes, all that, kind of, you know, all that sort of metric stuff has really been picking up in the last month now that we actually have some episodes in out, which is great. If you do like what you hear, you know, feel free to share it, let other people know, feel free to leave reviews. I do check. I don't think we have any yet. Um, but if we do, I will shout those out. Of course. Um, if they're good, if they're like a bad review, I'm probably, probably not going to say anything, but, um, but if you have any thoughts, yeah. even if it is ways to improve anything like that, feel free to reach out to us. Currently, it's still the best way is still, still through email. Uh, I'm looking at some potential other options, but currently that's still the best way. It's um, trainkickersnj at gmail.com. Um, you know, so f- feel free to reach out if you have any thoughts or anything like that. Um, for next week, I'm not entirely sure what we're going to do. I'm still working on trying to get a good Marvel Crisis Protocol schedule going. So might do that. If not, we might talk about some of these um, Age of Sigmar releases, or we might get into our Titanicus um Trader Legion's book review because I do want to start getting into a little bit more of or that kind of content as well, which um, I think would be of interest to people. I know I always like hearing people talk about it because I can engage with it while still busy and, and absorb something. So, um, so on behalf of both of us, um, thank you for listening, and we will see you next time. All right, see you guys. <laughs>